Jay Crawford, Adam the Bull, Garrett Bush, Tyvis Powell, Jason Lloyd. Plus, da 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 da, you're loving him, Mikey McNuggets. And so many big names, it would take me hours to say all of their names. The ultimate Cleveland sports show starts now. Booyah! Ladies and gentlemen, your long-awaited return of Adam the Bull takes one more day. He returns to the panel tomorrow, but today you're stuck with myself, Jason Lloyd, Tyvis Powell. We got Earl the Pearl behind the glass. Sitting next to Anthony Antonelli and director Steve, who may have a new nickname when you watch Behind the Glass tonight. There may be a new nickname for uh, director Steve. So highly recommend tuning into Behind the Glass. That debuts at 6 o'clock tonight before the Cavs and Celtics tip off, which we were just talking about before the show began. Tyvis is ready to throw the boo birds out at the Cavs. And Jason, you said that sparked a well, question. Well, that made me wonder, when is the last time, because he's sitting there booing. When's the last time he was you, actually booing? When is the last time you actually booed at a sporting event? Me? Yeah, you. You. Have you ever booed? Being a former player and knowing what that feels like, when is the last time that you booed another man at a sporting event? When I so this is interesting you say this. So as you know, I don't know if I can say this or not, but y'all family, I'm gonna tell you the truth. So you know I work for the Big Ten. Yeah, for you, that. you know, I go on the road, do the tailgate show. So, you blew the Michigan this past game. season, we did the show inside the big house, the Wolverines. We was there, and I made it my business to go boo. <laughs> 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 so, who was that? That was in September. <laughs> so just recently, not too far ago. Was that during the game? Yeah. That's boo. Awesome. That's awesome. Y'all stink. Yeah. How, how does the Big Ten feel about one of their employees booing one of their employees? <laughs> well, see, this is the thing. <laughs> I'm an employee from 11 to 1. Oh, okay. So this was this took place at 1:15. Like, yeah, I'm off the Gloves clock. Gloves are off. Off the clock. You know. <laughs> Did you ever get booed as a player? You. Like on the field or like coming into the stadium? Coming into the, well, the sta- stadium. Oh, yeah. yeah, no, I mean, yeah. <laughs> no, no. Like by your, not not by Penn State fans. No, like my Ohio own State, fans like you, booing yeah. me. No, unless you really, we were we were too good. It's hard for a safety to get booed unless you really blow a coverage. Like quarterbacks, you're gonna get booed. I blown a coverage. I blew a coverage in the national championship game. I think it, I think it was a touch. Oh, if no. it didn't go for a touchdown, it got to like the four yard line. Really? Well, how did you get crossed up? Think no, cover two, cover no, I completely just said, forget my responsibilities. I'm going to make a play, and it was the wrong time. To <laughs> yeah, it was, we was in we was in cover three. This is why I told y'all. This is the story why I don't really claim this this trophy because if y'all knew, like I was getting pulled, I was about to get yanked out the game for doing this. So they came out and they ran, they ran like a little over route, and then they ran the big post behind it, which is a cover three beater. It's to get the eyes of the post safety. If he jumps that, hit him over the top. I see that dude go over and the linebackers didn't take it. I said, oh, I'm all over this. He threw that ball. I turned around like, who is he throwing it to? And I seen Duran get beat on that post. I'm like, ah, oh, shoot. So I came to the <laughs> who, who was Bama's quarterback that year? No, this wasn't Bama. This, this, was, Mariota. this was Mariota. Mariota. Okay. He put it on the money, too. So I go to the sideline, <laughs> and that's when Urban comes over there. You know, Urban is Urban. Comes over to me. He goes, what was that call? What was the coverage y'all was in? I said, we was in cover three. He said, you blew a cover? You gave up the post in cover three? Wow! Wow! <laughs> so, I, said, I say to myself, here we go. So, I go I go sit on the bench. And my coach, my coach, my position coach is in the box, Coach Ash. He, they go, Tyvis, you got a phone call. So I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> so, I go grab the phone. He cussing me out. <laughs> So, you know, this is the thing. When you, get, when you give up a play like this, you always know that when you give up a big play, TV loves to put the, put the camera yep. on you on the sideline. Oh, yep. So I'm getting cussed out when I'm smiling like everything good because I'm like, just in case they put the camera on <laughs> He cussing me out. Like, he's like, Tyvis, say, well, what are you doing? And he said, if you do that, I might have to take you out of this game. I'm going to have to pull you out. <laughs> so I remember, I'll never forget. He said, yeah, I'm going to put you on the bench. I looked at the phone. You know when people say something crazy, you look at the phone. Yeah. I laugh and I hung it up. <laughs> <laughs> who was the backup safety? If they had taken you out, who would they have put in? 
Was it Eric Smith at the time? Eric Smith from Glenville? I think it was Eric Smith. I would think that was before he tore his ACL. So, yeah, it would have been Eric Smith. They would have been fine because he was a good player. He was young, though. So, it would have been the speed of the game, which he kind of adjusted really well to. But overall, the playbook, if they would have started doing checks and adjustments, he would have been all over the yeah. place. Speaking of young up and coming <laughs> players, Earl, I know you got a special shout out you want to give this morning. So, the floor is yours, my friend. Yeah, man, let's get going with this, man. Steve, you can take tag board four. Uh, I want to give a special shout out to Warrensville Lady Tigers senior forward Chelsea Johnson, who won the Northeast District Three Player of the Year award. Uh, Chelsea averages 11 points a game, eight rebounds a game, one and a half assists, two and uh, 2.1 steals a game in 23 games. She is a huge part uh, of the Warrensville Tigers playoff run right now. They won their fifth straight LEO championship. <coughs> Last week, they won their fourth straight district championship. And I uh, just wanted to show her some love, man. Let her know that uh, your hard work has not gone unnoticed. And that here at the Ultimate Cleveland Sports Show, we salute you. Yeah, what, I, you I, for her? what position yeah. is she playing? She's a Ford. That's my spot. Hey, with 11 and 8 at the four, that's actually really and good. And you numbers, said before, right? Earl, the, the Warrensville Lady Tigers, it's a really balanced offensive attack. So 11 points may not jump off the screen as. Oh my goodness, that's a legitimate uh, number one option. We have to stop from scoring 25 a game, but across the board, 11 on a balanced offensive attack is a hell of a hell of yeah, a stat line to look they at. got. They, I mean, they got a balanced roster, man. They got scores all over the court. Uh, they're one of the fastest teams that you will see play. They very well conditioned. This is a close knit group that works extremely hard. These girls is in the gym at 6 a.m. before school start, putting Ooh. in work. They go to school. They get out of school and go back to the gym of putting in more work. So they got the whole concept down of being great and understanding that it come with a price. It's awesome. And you said Keystone this weekend, or Keystone this week is their next playoff test? Yeah, they play Wednesday against Keystone, and this is the regional semifinals. Uh, Keystone is 26-0. and Warrensville is 22-2. and uh, We played Loudonville Ooh. earlier in the season. Loudonville was undefeated. They left with a loss. So Hold the L. And Keystone, I don't want to make bold predictions, but I have a good feeling. That Keystone's going to be holding an L come Wednesday night. I covered Keystone back in the day. Where's Keystone? Learn County. It's in the Gra- Southern Learn County, County in LaGrange. But, yeah, I covered in my previous life about six lifetimes ago when I was doing high school sports. I feel like that, too. I did a ton hey, of Earl, what, what does Lorain County start with? What's the first letter in Lorain County? <laughs> L. Yeah, that's what they're going to be holding. We'll call them double L. I feel that. Same. Lorain <laughs> County. Well, Shout you- out to the Warrensville Lady Tiger. Shout out to your daughter, Earl. And Chelsea Definitely Johnson. Best, Kudos uh, to yeah, Shout out to Chelsea Johnson. The uh, Northeast Division Three Player of the Year, man. Shout out to her. Shout out to Warrensville Lady Tigers. Good luck, oh y'all. Absolutely. Run to the state championship, man. Go get it done. Bring yeah. that title home. That's for awesome. Sure. Let's sure. do it. All right, give us a read. Let's get into some topics today. All right, let's get going. I got to find the right side of the paper. Get buckets with your first bet on FanDuel, America's number one sports book, because right now new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's 150 bucks if your bet wins. Bet on all your favorite NBA players and teams with quick bets, live same game parlays, exclusive props, and more. Just visit FanDuel.com slash UCSS and shoot your shot. FanDuel, official sportsbook partner of the NBA. Cavaliers guard Donovan Mitchell, at minimum, will miss at least the next three games after receiving treatment on a bum knee. Uh, how significant of, uh, is this loss for the Cavs considering they're teetering right now and they have the eighth hardest schedule for the remainder of the season? What's the next three games? Off the, uh, Boston, Boston, Boston tonight. tonight, Atlanta, and Minnesota. The next three games. <sighs> See, this is what I – this the – man. It's frustrating. It is because I remember sitting there with Jay Friday and we was talking about – the next 12 games, and he was like, March 29th or whatever, we're going to know who the Cleveland Cavaliers are. We're going to know if they're a serious team or not. And now the other guys are starting to get hurt. It's hard to find out, and it's, it's unfortunate because I like Boston is off this really hot streak. They just beat Golden State by like 50-something yeah, like points or something they like that. They didn't beat Golden, Golden State. Yeah, they, it was bad. It was, Jay, uh, Jalen Brown did a really good job guarding Steph Curry, so that was crazy. But now that Donovan's out <coughs> and all these other guys are starting to get these injuries, it's making these games not – Fun. Like I wanted to see. We're not gonna really know what we need to know. Like you're gonna, of course, you're gonna get some backups that's gonna have to step up. Like it was nice seeing Sam Merrill step up. It was nice to see Okoro hitting them shots. Hey, so it was nice seeing those things. But 
at the end of the day, you, you need to see your alpha. You need to see your, your number one guy, and you need to see what this team is going to look like. You know, I was sitting back, and I heard Patrick Beverly talking to Dame Lillard, and he was saying Dame, he was telling Dame to take the 40-foot shots because – you need to take as, as a teammate. I need to know when playoff time, like I need to start pr- pr- practicing for rebounding and stuff like that. I feel like the same thing happens when you got Donovan Mitchell. Like we need to see you in full mode. I need to know how you're going to be in the playoffs. I need to, I don't want you to rev up and start taking 30 shots in the playoffs because like we're going to be like, he gunning. You know, I want to see you do that now so now I can get myself prepared or how I need to play, how I fit in as a player when we come playoff time. And I think we're missing those precious moments right now with these guys being out of the lineup. So it, it waters down the next three games for sure. Late in that next game. Darius had a possession. He's driving. Isaac was in this corner. Mobley was in that corner. You know which one the Knicks guarded? Neither one. <laughs> like, and that's the yeah. reality. Like, and that's what we can't, that's why I keep talking about with Isaac. And, and you're seeing it with Evan, too. That's why Evan's got to shoot those and make those. And Isaac, he's having a phenomenal year. And Mike and I were talking the other night. He's making himself a ton of money right now. Teams still aren't going to guard him until he does it in the playoffs. Yeah. Until he does it in crunch time. And the Knicks just proved it to the other night. But I don't think this Donovan thing is that terrible. I've been saying all year long, find another way to win a game other than give it to Donovan and get out of the way. Well, guess what? You're playing really good teams now without Donovan Mitchell. You're going to have to find ways to play left-handed. You're going to have to find ways to go win games without your best player where it's not just give it to Donovan and get out of the way. So I don't, ultimately, I don't think it's that big of a deal. And that was a bad loss the other night. It was a really bad loss. I'm not going <laughs> to over, overreact to one loss. It did conjure up a lot of the... Uh, criticisms of last year, true, but it's still only one loss in the regular season, and it exposed some things that we kind of knew about them already. And I think I haven't written this yet, but I think Tristan Thompson could play a really big role for this team in moments in a postseason yeah. series against a team like the Knicks. And whoever would have thought that we would have said that? Where were you at in October? Fr- where were you at on Friday when I was talking about how you? We did a whole segment on that I? Friday. Oh, where, well, I don't know. Yeah. I didn't see Friday. Yeah, I was, do try and watch when I'm not yeah. on. I it do was try like, and like pop KYC. in. <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't see it. But no, I, I think he can help them. Uh, but but with this with Donovan being out the next couple of games, okay, you still have Darius Garland and Evan Mobley and Jared Allen. That's more than enough to go win NBA basketball games. And the Celtics are beat up tonight. I think Porzingis is questionable. Jalen Brown's questionable. We'll see if they wind up playing or not. I don't know if they're going to have a shoot around down the street here this morning or not. Maybe we'll know of, of their availability. But the Cavs still have enough. Go in the game. I don't want to hear excuses so about you, you don't have Donovan. You're a, you're comfortable with Darius Garland versus Jason Tatum, their best player versus our best player right now. You don't feel comfortable Tatum versus Mitchell. Tatum's Tatum's better. Tatum's the better player. I would I feel more comfortable with Tatum versus Mitchell. Well, yeah, of course you feel more comfortable. But I feel Tatum, like Tatum's Tatum a better Garland. player. They yeah, can Tatum definitely, Garland's but they still could. They could like if Tatum go for thirty, Spider could go for thirty. Like I'm not, uh, yeah, I'm, I mean, yeah, I'm not willing to say that right Darius now. Darius can go for 45. I, He's gone for 50 before. Yeah, I'm, Tatum's the better player. I'm not arguing with you. Yes, yeah. I'm not arguing yeah. that either. Yeah. But I'm saying I am more comfortable with uh, with in the crunch time. You know we, what? It's it, March. You're at home. You got the best team in the league on your court. Go beat them. Go win the game. I you're at home. You. T- to your point, Davis. No one's arguing the Cavs are better without Donovan Mitchell. I'll give you some numbers just to to back up how much different the Cavs have been this season with Mitchell on the court. Versus Mitchell off the court. And I apologize for reading off the phone, but there's a lot of numbers. I want to make sure I get this right. Donovan has a plus 9.7 net rating. It's the highest of any starter on the Cavs, highest of any player. Their second highest starter's net rating <coughs> is Jared Allen, plus 7.2. So he's over two points better than any other starter. When Mitchell's on the court this season, the Cavs' offensive rating, 116.7. Mm-hmm. Their defensive rating with Mitchell on the court, 107.1. When Donovan's on the bench, their offensive rating is just 111.3, down 5.5 five. Five points. Mm-hmm. Their defensive rating is 112.8, up 5.5 points. Okay. To give you guys a little context, what 5.5 points is, in terms of offensive rating, a 5.4 drop in offensive rating is the equivalent of Boston at number one in the league to Cleveland at number 15. Mm. Pretty significant drop. That's a big drop. Defensively, a drop of 5.7 defensive uh, net rating is a drop from Minnesota, number one in the league, to the Clippers at number 12 in the league. Still a big so drop. They're, they're a significantly yeah. different team without Donovan, just like – Every team in the league would be without their best player. Mm-hmm. But to Jason's point, and I think the big picture here for the next three games, and if he does miss more than just those three, the next two after that are Brooklyn and Phoenix at home and back-to-back Sunday, Monday here, is in the Knicks game when Brunson went down, the three best players on the court should have been Darius, yep. Evan, and Jared. Yep. 
And that's why I thought that loss was, if not their worst loss of the season, in the conversation to be their worst loss. For sure. Now, tonight, they won't have the three best players on the court. You could frankly make the case that even without Brown and Porzingis, the Celtics may have two of the three best. Drew, Hell, you can make the case they may have three of the Drew, best. Drew Tatum. You putting Derek White up there? Derek White's a phenomenal player. He is a very I'm, I'm good just saying, player. <laughs> I'm saying you, can make, you can make the argument, and we'll talk about the top 50 players. One of those two guys he mentions on it. And some Cavs aren't. So we'll, we'll talk about that in a sec. But this is a chance for Darius. No Donovan. It's 2021, 2022. Let's see all-star Darius again. Evan, this is your chance to show up, my friend. Jared, you can't have four rebounds like you did against Chicago. You, you can't shy away in the clutch moments like you did against New York. This is your opportunity to kind of cement what the Cavs need you to be come playoff time. And to Jason's point, he said it every time we've talked about the Cavs the last three weeks. I want to see what they do left-handed. When Donovan's not there, what does this team look like? Well, this is a built-in, and I'm not calling an excuse, this is a built-in trial run to see what lineups work best, how to best optimize the five, six guys, seven guys you have healthy in the rotation, and how to get Darius back to being 2021-2022 Darius. i tell you what, it will be an interesting game. One thing I will, I will tune in to see what I will check on. I, ain't, I don't know if I'm going to watch it. I'm going to tune in or check on is – Darius versus Drew Holiday because we know Drew Holiday is known as a one of the top and Derek White, two of the best on ball defense, exactly. All the best. So, if Darius can find some offensive light, which he has all the potential to do, if he could get a nice scoring output against them, okay, that's something to be like, all right, all right, come playoff time, I can count on you you in the playoffs, which. I'm not really worried about a lot of people are. I'm not worried about Darius in the playoffs of there. I think he can still get buckets, but you no, know, this is one of those situations where it's you want the ball, you want to be the man, you want to have that responsibility where you want to wave Mitchell off sometimes and be like, I got this. You got a perfect opportunity to go do it tonight. You know what's special about the 21 22 Darius Garland? He didn't have another ball dominant guard playing next to him. And he also had Jared Allen and Evan Mobley. Yeah. This is that team with more shooting around him. Yeah. This should be, theoretically speaking, the best version to unlock all of Darius' skill set. And I will say this. But give me see that, Steve. I'm, let me see that. I'm going to say this. I'm going to let you know something. <laughs> this is serious talk. And we can't out rebound a shooting guard with two big men. Then why are we running two big men? Uh, we need to switch that up. I mean, the fact that Hart has so many rebounds. Hart killed them in that postseason series. Like this is, them but it's night. ridiculous. Yeah. Why are we running? The reason you run two bigs is to dominate the paint. To do what Chicago did to them last yeah. week. If it's not effective and we still get beat on it, why are we doing it? I talked. To, I asked JB before the game about before the uh, Knicks game. Like, Chicago inserted Andre Drummond specifically for the Cavs. Andre Drummond's a bench player at this point in his career. But he starts against Cleveland. Why? Because they know they can push around these inside bigs. Like, the Cavs are going to struggle with two big lineups, with with big physical bigs. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, Jared Allen, for as athletic as he is, he's about that wide. Yeah. And Evan Mobley's about that wide. Yeah. (laughs) So you can can muscle these guys around. and And that's where, again, I think the Tristan component comes back into this, where I think he can help this team. Even if it's just on a couple possessions, even if it's just to sort of muck things up a little bit with, with some of these bigger bigs, it's not that Tristan's that big, but he is physical, and he will put his nose in there. And I think, you know, we got to wait and see what he looks like when he comes back from the suspension, if he's still well, McNuggets, the same player. McNuggets said that his PEDs that he was taking was to reduce fat, right? It was like a fat burner. There's side effects, and there's... It, I, I, it I, I, a, don't, I don't know the exact <laughs> PED he used. I, I, I don't want to misspeak on this. That's why, that's why I don't want don't, to say it. Don't speak no, on but I, I, I wrote it when it happened, and I thought it was like a muscle builder. I thought he, maybe I thought muscle builder, I, it, fat reducer. It, it, it could be a, a twofer, yeah. I mean, uh, we got to see. It was the good it. stuff. We got to see. But I tell you what, I, the, the test for me, and this is, I know a lot of people going to take this with a grain of salt, but after we lost to Chicago, Chicago played – the Bucks, mm-hmm. and I'm like, oh, okay. They ran out there and they put Drummond out there with Vucevic out there, and I was mm-hmm. like, well, let's see what Giannis do. <laughs> 46 points. That's what <laughs> he did. So, Evan, you need to uh, you need to get with go DM Giannis or ask him what it was that he took or what he did in the off season. You need to build you some muscle because it's there for the taking. Like if Giannis can pull, he was exactly as slim as you, wasn't he? he was, yeah. Uh, at 19, he was frail. 
I don't know what he looked what like it? at 22, but he was already in the muscle building. <laughs> well, well, he, he needed his, to get on that story, treatment. His story is what I mean. He was literally he, nutrient deficient. That's until true. He was an adult. A very, very different true. scenario yeah. than yeah, an Evan you Mobley. Can, you but, can build muscle. But, but two things I want to point out here. A, this injury is coming at a, I guess, I don't want to call it a good time. There's never a good time for an injury like this. But to Jason's point, there's enough time for him to come back, get 100% healthy for You're the playoff Donovan? run. Donovan's injury. Yeah. yeah. And it's just three games. Three, well, even, even if it's three start. or four. Yeah, it's a PRP shot. He's being reevaluated game. after three. He easily yeah. can miss more than three. Yeah. So two That's things Two things with that. He's played 47 games this season. The Cavs have 22 games left. If he misses just these three and he plays the other 19, <coughs> he's still eligible for postseason awards. It's a 65-game threshold. If he misses two more, let's say a back-to-back on Sunday and Monday, which could be this week, Boston, uh, Brooklyn and Phoenix – ineligible for postseason awards, which I know is not the end-all, be-all goal. The Cavs have much bigger aspirations than Donovan Mitchell being a first-team All-NBA guy. But he was having an MVP caliber season, at least in the conversation. He's not in the Jokic, mm. SGA, Giannis conversation. But in that, con- in that you know, top five, top six Others level, receiving votes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But that's, that's an accomplishment. For sure. So it's going to suck for him if he, if he does take a little longer than just these three games that he'll be ineligible because of these new NBA rules. But on a bigger picture for the Cavs, I still believe the two seed's crucial for them in the postseason. <coughs> and now they fall into the three seed. They're half a game behind Milwaukee. And with Donovan out, we're going to need Darius, Jarrett, Evan. Hopefully Max gets back healthy. His injury is not anything serious. Same with Isaac, Karras, George Niang. Anytime you want to make a shot, my friend, it would be more than welcome. <laughs> we, we, we could use one or two or, or six or seven, please. Dean Wade, Sam Merrill. All these guys have to come together to keep the Cavs afloat mm-hmm. because there is a stretch. This schedule is a gauntlet coming up. Yeah. I mean, it really is a gauntlet. I, I can't emphasize that enough. Earl had mentioned earlier, it is the eighth hardest schedule in the NBA down the stretch, and especially up until March 26, they play almost exclusively playoff and play in teams. And if they do fall from the three seed, they got a little buffer over the four seed in New York right now, but I really don't want to be in that four or five matchup. I and you. I would much, 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 much prefer, and I think the Cavs, kind of need that home court advantage in a 2-3 series against Milwaukee just because I think the idea of having to go on the road to Milwaukee for a game seven in the second round of the playoffs, the outlook of that game looks drastically different at the Pfizer Forum or whatever it's called in Milwaukee versus at Rocket Mortgage Fieldhouse. Yeah. So I do think it is, it is really critical for this team to kind of come together. <laughs> we saw them rally when DG and Mobley went out. That's when they went on this 18-2 and two stretch. Yeah. It's time for them to rally well, together without a, Donovan here and keep the team afloat. That's actually interesting you bring that up because – if they, for the next, let's say he's out for five games. For the next five games, if the offense did look like it did in 18 and 2, I think you kind of got your answer for moving forward. Like, maybe it's something about the two small guard thing. Like, maybe you only do need one ball-dominant guy. If they're swinging the ball around and they're effective, the offense is looking good, they're hitting shots, like, maybe you do need to think about running those type of lineups again. I, I just think it's just something to monitor. Darius' best season was when Colin was hurt, when he had the ball in his hands. There, Donovan was in Utah. Colin Sexton was having knee surgery, and Darius was running the show. That was his best Colin season. Colin Sexton, I don't really want to hear his name. He blew – he cost me $500 last <laughs> oh night. Oh, my God. I'm, uh, I'm done with it. Tyvis' burn book of people who have screwed him with it. No, because he did. Almost man. as long as the – All of a sudden, he want to be great last night. I didn't even know he got assists like that. <laughs> I had him on. I had him on points and assists, twenty nine and a half. He blew that out the water. Dude, all had twenty nine points alone and like seven assists. Like, where did this come from? So you're happy? No, I had oh, you the went, under. Oh, you yeah, under, oh, oh, under oh, on assists. Oh, oh. Under on points and on assists. Points and assists. It was twenty nine and a half points and assists combined. Come. Make your point. You're making a great. Go ahead. Point. Yeah. I don't remember the point. Was. Oh, damn it! Best season. Now, is that the best version of the Cavs? I don't know, but that's the best version of Darius. Is, is when he's got the ball alone. I, I think we're seeing enough evidence of that. But you could still have, just because it's the best version of Darius doesn't mean it's the best version of the Cavs. Darius and Donovan together is still probably a better team. It is a better team than Darius alone, the best version of Darius. Does that make sense? So, yeah, so you, 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 it's, it's sacrifice. You have to sacrifice <coughs> for the better than the team, and, and we'll see what happens with Donovan this summer. And you can have the same conversation with the bigs, you know, the best version of Jarrett might be without Evan on the court, but the best version of the Cavs is probably figuring out how to get these two to play together. And I still, I think that's still a work in progress. And JB clearly agrees because he's still trying to tag team these guys in and out as much as possible and run one big on the floor as much as he can. I referenced the numbers yesterday. And I'm curious to hear your thoughts on this, but 
Jared Allen's net rating this season when he's the only big on the court. So without Evan Mobley's plus 12.6. Evan Mobley's net rating when he plays without Jared Allen is plus 5.9. Their mm. net rating together is 4.6. Yeah. So it's still a work in progress, obviously. Evan has to shoot the, the, yeah. the play you referenced late in the fourth quarter when yeah. Darius drove on the Knicks. And Evan, we'll, we'll break this down tomorrow on the Cavs show, but if I'm, if I'm driving, if the camera in front of me is the basket – Evan is wide ass open yep. in the left corner, unguarded. <laughs> yep. And not only were the Knicks not guarding him, Darius didn't even consider passing to him. <laughs> and, and that's where. And, and that, that's the issue. It's, it's not that they left him open, it's that it's not even a passing option for Darius, who then gets stuck with four guys in the paint. Right. It causes a turnover, and that's essentially the game. And that's where, you know, we talk about Mobley having to shoot more threes. Even if he's not making him, he has to be a threat to where Darius can feel comfortable. Dishing the ball Darius off. Darius has to make that pass. Has to make that, that pass, exactly. And, and Evan has to take that shot. Hey, I'm going to send you the. Or I, ha, I took a screenshot. I'm going to send you the tweet. <laughs> they for it. It's ex, this exact play. And they made my boy Evan touch the earth on the obviously. That was, that, that was one of the nastiest moves I've seen in person. <laughs> Which one? He got it. The dude came down, hit him with the end, and now the Evan just. He gave it up to the Lord. Oh, Lord. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was like, man. And I just, I just sent that to you. Put that in tag mode when you get a sec. <laughs> Uh, but, no, that was one of the nastiest in-and-out crosses I've ever seen. And he's looking for loose change. It was yeah, he, bad. It was bad. Did, did you know what you're talking about? It was no. bad. You oh, didn't see no. it. Well, we he can't. talked about it on Twitter. That's how I see yeah, it. Yeah, it, uh, I'll show you. I, would, I, would, I don't know if this fits under the fair play rule of uh, NBA video. I left the game. I, I went for pregame, and then I left and watched the game at home, so yeah. I didn't see. He gave it up to the Lord. I'm telling you. You're going to be like, <laughs> good night. Who crossed him over? I don't even know. Deuce who. McBride. Who? I see. <laughs> this makes for riveting TV. Hang on, I gotta, I gotta watch. Oh my God! I know, I know. Boy, it, Evan Mobley, change, all time, like, all time great defender. He so looked far like a baby early on. But yeah, he he touched Searching the ground. For his mama. It was it was tough. Uh, when you get that in tag, we'll kind of break that down. But with the spacing, <coughs> you can't have good spacing with two bigs. By the way, like it's actually not the spacing with the two bigs. Uh, here's the play I'm referencing. Now, I know it's got a small on tag board, but Evan Mobley is standing in the left corner there. Oh, I didn't know this was out there. Wait, yeah, so e- Evan Mobley's in the left corner. He's kind of. And, and Isaac's in the right corner. Isaac's, Isaac's in the Isaac's right in corner. The right. But I don't, Look at that. Oh, I see Evan's Evan in the top. Nah, he was blended you in. You see four Knicks. There are one, two, three, four, you five, six. There's seven, seven feet in the paint. Now, this, this play ends up being a turnover, by the way. Darius tries Shocking. kicking it out. There's nowhere for him to go. Now, A, you could say it's kind of a reckless drive on Darius's, uh, on Darius's part to be driving into the paint, but he also. I guess you could say he should anticipate the fact that they're not even going to guard Evan Mobley. Yeah. The fact they're not, you have to kick it to the corner, but he didn't even look his way. This is the and, time and, and that's, to make that's that the play. Issue. Yeah. It's and, March. Make the pass. Make the pass to Evan. Let Evan take that corner three. If he makes that, you know what that does for the confidence of everybody? Yeah. And, and what it, you know, I mean, Tom Tibble clearly has said, I don't trust you. I don't trust you. Like, you guys can stand there all day long. We are not scared of you. We're going to follow him. But the way that you loosen that up is by making that pass and having him make that shot. And until that happens, that's going to continue. And the fact that he didn't even consider it. Yeah. That block, that, which is crazy because Evan, hit, he didn't hit some threes. He didn't put it on tape that he could make them. That's he hasn't of, shot many lately. The I last know. Yeah. Those yeah. they, they three-point attempts have kind of tallied down. And I thought he had a couple. Well, this is Chicago. He took two or three early, missed them. And then I thought he got a little shot hesitant, even though he had some good looks. But – to what we talked about earlier, I just want to see him shoot those. Yeah. You have to shoot them. And even if they don't go in, the defense knowing, hey, he may shoot that, and yeah. at the end of a shot clock, I told you. I don't want to give a guy a wide-ass open right. three in the corner. Like, right. that has to be something. I also saw a, uh, a stat, speaking of corner threes, I'm going to pull this up real quick. Man, this is from NBA it. University. Say F it. The team percentage on corner threes this year, which is the easiest. The, the easiest three and the shot teams want the most. The Pelicans shoot 43% as a team from the corner. That's deadly. I'm about to say that's the really Cavs weird. are 26th in the league in really? corner threes, which doesn't match my eye test. No, me it neither. doesn't match. What my, is it? What's the 37 and a half percent? That's not terrible, but well, it's it's, it's, it's not it's not good in better. comparison to the rest of the league. Yeah. When you have guys, you know, Boston second in the league, Milwaukee third, Brooklyn fourth, Clippers five, OKC six, Indianapolis seventh, the Knicks eighth, Minnesota ninth, Phoenix tenth. Like, so most of the best teams in the league are in that top 10. I'm just spitballing. Is that Niang's struggles? And, I mean, Max hasn't shot it great, but I don't know how many have been from the corner. Isaac's been money from the Isaac's corner. Isaac's been money. Yeah, he, and he has to have 
one of the highest corner three percentages. Yeah, I'm tell league, you, I'm gonna say it again because I said it about two months ago. Sam Merrill is who we thought Max Struess was supposed to be as far as shooting. Uh, mm, I don't think anyone expected Struess to be a flame throwing 40% three points. You thought he would be the best shooter on your team? I thought he was an upgrade at the three. Which he was at the time. Overall core. Overall core. I agree with that. I don't know. If my guys that keep shooting like this, I don't know. Now the, the, but the, at the, the time, he was an upgrade over. The quality of their looks are very different, too. <laughs> Isaac's looks, for the most part, this is no disrespect to Isaac. Well, not saying anything away. Teams are leaving him open, yes. and he's making wide open threes, which is what you need him to do. Yes. Max, they're running plays for. He's coming off down screens, coming yes. off pin downs. They even ran a little elevator set two games ago that I hadn't seen before, where he kind of came through two screens, closed the door. Uh, so Isaac's not I getting love those. Their play. What Darius ran the other day too, I and it was a thing I of beauty. Love play. <laughs> but uh, but Isaac's attempts in the degree of difficulty do not equal Max's. Totally fair. Which you do have to kind of look at the numbers of, with a little context and know you know forty percent on wide open, thirty three percent on this contested is- coming off screens. But with that being said. Isaac Okoro's made himself eighty to hundred million dollars this summer. I'm serious. This the He's been re- phenomenal. This is all Golden State's fault. It's Steph Curry's fault. If they didn't shoot the ball, so when they changed the whole game, they, they, they changed the yeah. game. It was a mid-range to inside game, and they didn't came and everybody hitting all these trays. And now if you can't shoot threes, you can't really hang. You know what really changed the game? Two thousand one, when they changed the rules about guarding and illegal defense and zone defense. David Stern and Jerry Colangelo were hellbent on loosening up the game and spreading up the game. That's what changed the game. <laughs> and then Golden State broke the game when they got all these shooters together. And that, that was not the plan. Like, I don't think that they planned to necessarily do it that way. It was very organic. Whoever thought Draymond Green was going to become the player that he did. And, I mean, prime Dray- Draymond was a beast as a second-round pick. Elite. Elite. Yeah. His last – that game we beat them in the finals – didn't he hit like four threes or something like that? Uh, he was like, he, he was cashing out that game. Yeah, he had a great game. Seven. Yeah. I think I talked about it before. The Cavs were trying to get Clay Thompson in that draft. Yeah. yeah. They were, they were, they thought they were close to getting up and getting a third top 10 pick. They were going after Clay. Blew it. Imagine how much different history would be if they got Kyrie and Clay. LeBron with Clay Thompson in his peak would have been Sick. the literal perfect yeah. pick. Oh my, I just, that's. Yeah. That's, they were, they, that's who they're going after. I mean, he was great with Steph and Draymond, don't get me wrong, but that is the ideal, he got, he got four ideal rings. two guard next to LeBron. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Yep. Yeah. What could have been? At least we got a ring out of all they of this. Get a ring out of it. Speaking of shooting, Akuro, questionable tonight. Max Struess, questionable tonight. Karis LeVert, questionable tonight. And Earl, give us three before we break down a little bit of the Celtics. Yeah, don't forget to catch the uh, next episode of the Ultimate Cleveland Cavs Show with Jason Lloyd and Mikey McNuggets. If you missed G and Tyvis yesterday on the Ultimate Brown Show, go back and watch that. Definitely was a fire episode. And, of course, another episode of the Ultimate 216 Show will be coming up soon. And we're going to get the Ultimate Guardian Show started pretty soon as the season kickoff. So catch all the Ultimate spinoff shows, man, on the Ultimate Cleveland Sports Show YouTube page. Remember to like and subscribe, ring the bell to stay <coughs> notified on all the things that we got going on here. So, oh, real quick, real quick, that graphic said Tuesday. We are doing our show Wednesday this week just because they play the Celtics tonight. We want to react to it tomorrow. So, Ultimate Cavs show tomorrow night. So, we got behind the glass for y'all tonight at 6 o'clock. So, the, the Cavs are coming off an ugly, ugly loss against the New York Knicks. Meanwhile, the Boston Celtics absolutely destroyed the Golden State uh, Warriors the last time they was on the court. No Donovan Mitchell, probably no Max Struess, no Karis LeVert. This game is going to come down to how, how much can Darius Garland and Evan Mobley step up and, and try to lead the cast to victory. What y'all think? I think the game actually going to be closer than a lot of people think. I know off the top of your head, you think no Donovan Mitchell, all these guys questionable. You think they ain't got a chance. You think of Boston just beating Golden State the way that they did. You think, oh, yeah, they're going to come here and run the Cavs and it'll be over with. But I think – Due to the fact that they beat Golden State so bad that they on cloud nine, and I think the Cavs losing that game in the fashion that they lost it in, they're going to want to prove something. So this is a game to try to get the fan base to get comfortable with them again. And I think they're going to come out there and try to really put a dominant performance on, especially if 
certain guys are out. If Porzingis and yeah. Jalen Brown is out, that's more. I think you got enough offensive weapons to be able to do something. They, are they still the number two defensively in the league? Cavs? Boston? Cavs. No, Boston is now number two defensively. <laughs> what are we, three? Uh, I don't know, actually. I'll, I'll we, I don't tell me we fell off like that. Just last week we was two. I, I, I'll look into it. Right now, just to give you a little context on Boston, they're on an 11-game win streak. Yeah, they are. Their average margin of victory on this 11-game win streak is 23 points per game. Mm. They have two wins in this streak by 50 points. They have four wins by 28 or more points. Currently in the NBA, they're number one in offensive rating, number two in defensive rating. When you look at all the teams across the league, it is Boston, then kind of everyone else. That's especially the case in the Eastern Conference. And I was excited, as you mentioned earlier tonight, looked like to be a measuring stick game for the Cavs. Mm -hmm. When you thought you'd have Donovan and all your starters, Isaac, Max, Karras, we'll see if they play or not. But now I'm I'm looking to see if JB can rally the troops similar to how Thibodeau did on on Sunday night. They lose Brunson in the first quarter, a minute into the game, eight rotation players. It's gut check time, right? Mm -hmm. Put up or shut up. Earl, you mentioned yesterday, toughness comes from the reflection of your coach. And, JB, it's time to see if you can get your guys to rally around and, and play with that level of intensity and that level of determination to put up a fight against the best team in basketball. Coming off a win against Golden State, where at the end of the first half, I had to quadruple check my ESPN app to make sure it was accurate. I thought it was a typo at first. Then I went on Twitter, and I was like, all right, they both have to be wrong. Let me go on my physical laptop to check the score. And they were up by 50 points, essentially, at halftime. Did Steph hit a three that game? Did he? I do not know if he had a three I or not. But all said. I do know is Boston's he playing out of this nine. world right now. He went what? He went 0 for 9. 0 for 9? Yeah, yeah. incredible yeah. job by Jalen yeah. Brown defensively. Yeah. Drew Holiday, Derek White, really good defenders in their own right. So I'm looking tonight, Jason, to see can the Cavs kind of find something within themselves, play with a little gut and intensity, a little toughness we didn't see on Sunday against the Knicks, hmm. and at least put up a fight, compete and contend, step above everyone else in the league right now. Everything you said is reasonable and makes perfect sense that they should be embarrassed after that loss. They should come out ready to compete, ready to play. It's all logical. It's a sound argument, and I agree with it. And then I think back to Mitchell Robinson laughing at them last year, and then he came out and did it again. So I don't know. We'll see. But I hope you're right. I hope that this team is embarrassed about the way that they played the other night. They should be. It was a terrible game. Terrible effort, terrible game, terrible loss. And, and again, like Boston may not be at full strength tonight either. So Who was starting at the two um, when, when Mitchell's out? Who was the starting lineup? Struess. It was Struce and Okoro at the start last week, yeah. or on Sunday last week. And game. when Mitchell was starting and, and DG and Evan was out, what was that lineup, you know, off the top of your head? Yeah, it was Struce, Okoro, uh, Wade was starting, right? He was, yeah, yeah Wade. And Allen. And Allen, yeah. Hmm. To Jason's point about the Mitchell Robinson situation where he laughed at them and then did it again, if the Cavs went and lay an egg tonight. What? Say I, it. Say it. I'm not saying I'm throwing in the white flag, <laughs> but. I don't know what it would take to get me to believe back into this. Hmm. I'm serious. If, if they lay another egg tonight, after what happened on Sunday in the embarrassing fashion in which they lost. It's in home. Which Josh this game Hart, is home, right? Home on national TV again. Oh, yeah. After Josh Hart pimps your chain. You know, Earl mentioned yesterday, if that had happened and I was on the bench, like, I'm throwing a punch at Josh Hart. Like, if you don't show some kind of bounce back, some kind of fight, they got, what, the junkyard dog chain in the locker room? Yeah, I, yeah, throw I haven't that shit in the trash can. Like, that's right. No, I'm serious. <laughs> there, there ain't nothing dog about. Yeah. There's no dog about this team if they come out and they get pounded again tonight. Like, there's no ex- – <laughs> Don't laugh. That. Sorry, that was that was word. crazy. But there's that there's, was crazy. There's no excuse on national TV and back-to-back games to get punked. You're supposed to be the second best team in the East. Yeah. You got aspirations to win a championship. We've sat on this panel and said this team can compete with any team, including Boston. And now I'm rethinking that same take. And if they come out a shorthanded Knicks team, just embarrasses you flat out. I know the game was close. The final score was an embarrassing loss, but the fact <laughs> in which they lost was embarrassing. If they come out tonight with the same. Lack of intensity, lack of toughness, and they just frankly let Boston do whatever the hell they want to them on offense and defense. I don't know what it would take for me to buy back into this team. Like I, the white flag, will, I, you know it'll what? start be rotating, Tyvis. You, know, you know what it would take? What? Say, say they went out there and they played this game, right? But Darius was actually like looking to hit like Okoro for open passes, or he drove to the lane and he found Evan Mobley. And they just didn't fall. That's that's fine. You, that's what I'm saying. And, and, and they end up losing by like 15. No, You'll it, still be like, okay, it, they it, lost. It's an effort but thing. It'll be one of the things okay, you, yeah. you know when you see it. If, if they let Boston come out and punk them again. Well, if they, if that's a again, totally different story. And once again, no, if they lose this game, they lose this game. I'm not saying they have to win this game. I mean, if they. No, I was saying if they lost by double digits, like if they got smoked. 
but shots just didn't fall. Yeah, that's fine. That's what that's, I'm that's saying. Fine, yeah. So I'm saying you wouldn't wave the white flag. No, I'm saying I'm that's waving the white flag saying. if I come out and I see Peyton Pritchard go off for 36 and 11. And Peyton and Pritch- cook the Cavs. And, Pritchard- and if I see uh, Jason Tatum <laughs> pop Pritchard Pritchard Paris Silver chain on the bench again. Le- if that happens. Throw him the flag in. It- I'm trying to think of the if that one. Listen, listen to me right now. If Peyton Pritchard go for 36 and Jay- Jason Tatum pops <laughs> Donovan Mitchell's chain. Take the chain off. <laughs> it, I swear on everything I owe my kids. It should be some type of firing that's going on right then and there. It, like that, it, it, if y'all can't and get embarrassed like that twice and just think that that's okay and think that the fans is gonna be behind y'all, it, it, coach better get fired. Some players better get cut. Something, something. You better go. What's the dude off of, uh, that y'all watch? Winning time. Uh, yeah. The Did Lakers you see season one where they went and got the one dude Wood Harris character? Woody Harrison? No, Wood Harris. Oh, I, didn't, I, didn't see what, I didn't see what in time. Oh my god, they, they ended up getting the dude that was stealing on people on the court. They had the dog guy. Anyways, go get Metal World Peace and get yeah. him out here. That, make a long story my, short. Go get World Peace. My point is that it doesn't have to be if they lose by 12, I'll be okay. Lose by 13, I'm free. You'll know it. it right. It'll be a situation. You'll know it when you see it. And I if it's another it. lackluster effort and they kind of just, eh, it's, we don't have Donovan, we don't have Max, we don't have Isaac, whatever, like. I'm gonna have a hard time ever believing this team will have it when it matters. I'm officially, I think I'm, I think I'm Adam the Bull right now. <laughs> I think I, I, I don't really have no motivation to watch them anymore. I really don't. I think I'm gonna wait till the playoffs. Jason, how do you feel on that? Am I, am I, am I being a little too harsh? <sighs> no, but it's it's March 5th, and if they lose this game, hmm. when the playoffs begin, everyone's still gonna pick them to win. Who oh. they are. Which everyone one? around here pick them to win what the series against whoever who? they play if they're a two or three seed whoever they're playing they're more than likely most people are going to pick them to win if, if they the, play if they're the, the three if, seed and they play Indiana in the first round right I now. would take them to win that Indiana can score I just I, I'm, I'm, I just couldn't take them seriously as a legit contender now if they, they play series, Philly, if they play thing. Philly in the first round I'm taking Philly actually right now <laughs> right now the three six. <laughs> The three six would be them Orlando right now. I, I would take them over Orlando. I would take Orlando. them over Orlando. But Miami seven, we're taking over Miami right now. Probably not. <laughs> it's Miami. So, so you, you see what I'm saying? Like, I, <laughs> but what, not, whatever happens tonight is not going to have any bearing on how I feel about them in April. But if they if they lay a, a mental leg, yeah. and I'll, I'll phrase it like that. I just like maybe I did a bad job phrasing this. There's no way. I could not ever see. I don't want to say ever. I have a very hard time seeing myself buying back into this team being mentally tough enough yeah. to compete in a postseason series if your response to what happened against New York on Sunday is another dud. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's why I said earlier. Like, just go back and look at what happened last year where Mitchell Robinson was laughing at you in the locker room. You, and I thought for sure they would come out and show some sort of fight. Nope. They did it again. So that, like, part of it, this is who they are. I don't want that to be true, this Jason. This is who they are. <laughs> Jason, either. I don't stop want, saying that. I don't want that but, to be But true. again, that's where I think, and I don't want to make too much of Tristan because I don't want to make this Danny Green last year. I kept saying you got to play Danny Green because you got nobody else, and Danny Green didn't help him either because Tristan's at the end. But at least Tristan will bring the fight. That's true. Yeah. Tristan will bring the fight to you. Like, and if Tristan he, was out there when that chain popping went on, there would have been other popping going on. Is Tristan when when you when you uh, suspended? You can't even come to the game. No, no. You you're around the team for like practice and stuff, but you can't. Okay. Yeah. How many more games he got now? He got seven him. or eight. Yeah, mid March ah, he's back. Seven or eight. Oh. Before this stretch is over, he's back, but it's in the middle of this stretch. They got like I said, they got five games in the next week. They got tonight, Thursday, Friday, Sunday, Monday. Five games in the next week. I don't want that to be true, Jason. <laughs> I don't. I well, like it, this. It's a sobering reality. It though. doesn't. I can say it I, was I, true last April. It doesn't mean it has to be true now. Uh, well, we just need some sort of evidence to show that it's. Well, the evidence is not changed. great because and, and the, no. because the only evidence we got is Chicago and Knicks. Yeah. Well, we did have a little precursor evidence when we saw Donovan go after Zach Collins against San Antonio. We saw a little bit of fight when Jared Allen went after Ben Simmons in Brooklyn. He threw. He, but I once again, know, he those are being being threw him to the ground like it was nothing. But it, at least at least he did something. Man. At least he showed some he sort of retaliation. He should have. 
He should have took the fine. Did he get fined for that? I don't remember. Because I would, I would, I would have just took a fine. I don't think so because I think I'd remember and have heard about uh, it. If he did. I don't think he did. I feel like Jared Allen's never been fined in his life. He needs to be. <laughs> <laughs> he needs just to walk be. up and punch somebody yeah. tonight. <laughs> just, yeah. We have to be. Uh, you know what? I'm not opposed to it. I don't even promote I'm violence. I'm kidding. <laughs> I don't even promote violence. You can't just try and act tough just to act tough. Come on, like, man. That comes off so get, phony. Yeah, that ain't going to get you anywhere. It's just, it's answering the moment. It's, it's, it's answering the moment with physicality when it's called for. That's yeah. what I think you're looking to see. Dunk on somebody. He can dunk on people. He cool. does dunk on people. Well, that's, that, that's okay, not the right okay. Answer. Dunk on him and then you stare him down. Has he got a tech this year? No, <laughs> he ain't never got a tech in his life. He I, probably, I don't know. you know, he he's a good player. Dunk on him and say I apologize. He is a, he is a very. Jared, I want to be very careful here because Jared Allen has had a very good year. Yes, he he's had an excellent coming yeah. off of what he Would you pay the him? embarrassment of the Knicks. He's already paid. You don't have to worry about that. Yeah, he's he's got. He Three got paid left. when he got here. Yeah. Coming off the embarrassment of the Knicks series, he had some rebuilding to do, and he's a wonderful NBA player. Is he the most – is he Kendrick Perkins down low? He is not. <laughs> but he is a very skilled big man who is very good at what he does. Okay. And, and like, I don't want to start dumping all over Jared again because he's – he took a lot of abuse and rightfully so in that Knicks series because it's a terrible series for well, him. He, he's a very good. NBA he did player. that to himself when he made his statement. Oh, the well, lights he, are too yeah, bright. That yeah, like, he, didn't, he, didn't, he, didn't, he didn't do himself any favors. Yeah, with that, but he, the my, that was just. I, we were on check. set doing the show when he said that, and yeah. my head separated from my yeah. body. I, I'm gonna be honest with you. Still to this day, I I deny that he actually. I thought it was like one of them no, made up quotes. I need real. to go actually check the audio on that. Uh, no, it was real. Real quick. This will not happen. I'm just throwing this out there because I think it'd be hysterical. <laughs> not real, very fake scenario. And then we'll move on, Earl. But we know JB's going to shrink his rotation to eight, nine tops in the postseason, right? Yeah. Imani Bates. What if? <laughs> oh Lord. What if? I need some Advil. JB felt so <coughs> much pressure that he felt if they didn't win at least two playoff series, his job was gone. So he did something radical mm-hmm. and was like, Kobe. Once again, this is this completely. This is stupid. This is very. I'm just. I think it'd be funny. Way to, way to clear that up. I just want to make sure before I do a clip this, um, this is stupid. Just never gonna happen. He goes to Kobe and goes, Niang's not playing in the playoffs. Cut him. <laughs> uh, Ty Jerome, cut him. Craig Porter Jr. not playing, cut him. I want Perk. I want Metal World Peace. I want bring back the bad boy Pistons who was the big. I want John Sally. And you just assembled John a goon Sally's squad. 64 I don't years crap. old. <laughs> you assembled a goon squad on the end of your bench. That God forbid anyone pops his chain again, <laughs> it's sight on scene. It goes down. You got the biggest, baddest, the monsters of former NBA brawlers. Who else? Uh, the Marcus Cousins. Uh, I want the Morris Bruins. The Mor- I they want the Morris agents? I don't know. Get them. Find a way. I want the dude on Indiana that does jujitsu, James Johnson, who could kick a basketball. Th- I want a goon squad on my bench. Cut the whole charge. Well, the problem every goon that ever existed. <coughs> the problem I want him on my bench. Is, the, the problem is, is, I dare you to start something with Donovan Mitchell with those guys the, sitting next to him. I mean, they would. They just they whole team would Hell, be fire Luke Walton. That's where John Sally, assistant coach, bring back Ben Wallace, high as he wants to be. Bring back anyone you <laughs> want. Somebody say that they sold him a bag. Yeah, in that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they said that Ben when Ben Wallace was here. They sold that's a joke. Him. I'm clearly joking. Do not cut that. That's clearly a joke. But they gonna realize cut. these men are in their 50s and probably can barely move today. <laughs> I don't care. <coughs> Put Arnold Schwarzenegger on the bench. You just need Let's just add everybody. I think you got it with Tristan when Tristan comes back. Let's hire John Jones. You want to start a fight with the Cavs and you got light uh, heavyweight UFC champion Boxer. John Jones on the bench? Not going to happen. All right, Earl, let's get a read. Let's move on to our next stop. Meet him in the parking lot. That'd be hysterical. Just All right, so party. tonight, man, after a two-week hiatus, the OG back? of the Ultimate Cleveland Sports Show spinoff shows Behind the Glass is back. Marcel, Anthony Antonelli, Mikey McNuggets, man. We got a fire, what, 40, 45-minute episode of Behind the Glass coming at you around 6 o'clock tonight. Don't forget to tap in for that. Like, subscribe, ring the bell, all that good stuff. I'm gonna let you set this one up, man, because this was this was your idea. So the Ringer yeah. basically dropped their top 50 NBA players. Donovan Mitchell was on the list. He was the only Cleveland Cavalier on the list. Mm. You told me personally, uh, you don't believe the Cavaliers will be legit contenders with one top 50 player. So the question to the panel: Who's closer to being a top 50 player, 
Evan Mobley or Darius Garland? Let me before you answer that specific question. This is it's from Kevin O'Connor, by the way. This was his top 50 NBA players today. He gave no criteria. I'll give you. I know it's small to see here. We we broke this down into tiers so you could actually read it on screen. He didn't give any criteria on how he judged. This was. I mean, John Morant's in the same tier as Donovan Mitchell, so it's not based off this season. It looks like he calculated what you've done in the past with what you've done this year. No perfect science. This is Kevin O'Connor's <coughs> top 50. In Donovan Mitchell's tier, he has, Mitchell is a tier 6 guy. Now he went, Jokic was tier 1 by himself, and then not everyone, not it had an equal. But this was tier 6 with Donovan Mitchell, which was between 15 and 21. So he didn't put a number next to these names, but these were the players between 15 and 21. John Morant, James Harden, Donovan Mitchell, Dame Lillard, Paul George, and Anthony Edwards. Initial thoughts on this part of it before we move on. He, because I think Donovan, I think he's a little too low between 15 and 21, but he's in the same category as Anthony Edwards. I, I think he's better than Harden and, and Damian Lillard at this point. If you want to argue Paul George one way or another, I, I'll have it either way. But I think if this is the tier he's in, he's at the top of this tier, but I think he should be one tier up. Ja is so hard to gauge anymore. <laughs> it's hard to put a grade on him. Ja, for any, well, I, ja I'm is, not a Harden fan. I've never been a Harden fan. I know he's living his best life, and this, the Clippers are getting their best version of Harden right now, but I don't expect <coughs> it to last because it's not April yet. Yeah, April, May, and June, he'll that's, do what he does. That's messed up to say. It's true. It's, it's true. We got plenty of proof. <laughs> the tier, I mean, April, he'll star in April, but by May and June. He's so the tier up. above, by the way, so this was 10 to 15. This is just ahead of that list. Jason Kevin Cole. Durant, Jimmy Butler... Anthony Davis, Tyrese Halliburton, and Wembenyama. And I think Wembenyama is way too high. <laughs> Halliburton, I think you could have an argument, should be a tier lower. Yeah. But he's in the same class as Donovan. Wemby, who's been un- incredible, like literally unbelievable, I think he's just too early to put him in that, that tier. But any big issue with where, where Donovan is before we get to the bottom? Who, read that yeah, tier read again. That again. <laughs> tier above Donovan's yeah. tier. Kevin Durant, Jimmy Butler, Anthony Davis, Wemby and Halliburton. I'd put him in that one. I don't think, I don't know that Halliburton deserves to be in there yet, but I don't think Donovan is. Would you trade Donovan for Kevin Durant straight up? I would. I'd rather have Kevin Durant on my team than Donovan Mitchell. Right now, Durant's better. Yeah. 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 I mean, people in Cleveland may disagree. I'd rather have Jimmy Butler than Donovan Mitchell. Jimmy Butler in the playoffs? I'll take that guy every time. Can we have Donovan in the regular season and Jimmy in the playoffs? The former super player? Yeah, right. Anthony, so I, Anthony Davis. I'd, I'd rather have AD than uh, healthy AD, obviously. Yeah. And then Wemby and Halliburton. I think it's too early for Wemby, Halliburton. I'd Hall- take if Wemby. If you want to argue one way or another. Halliburton should probably be down in Donovan's tier. Yeah. But I don't think Donovan should be in that tier with those guys. So, but so in the, for the most part. I think it's about right. Sip, okay. So this, this is where it gets interesting. This is what I really want to talk about. According to Kevin O'Connor, and this is his top 50 from the ringer, Donovan's the only Cav in the top 50. He does not have an honorable mention, so I don't know if Darius, Jarrett, and Evan Mobley are 51, 52, 53. We have no idea where anyone outside of the top 50 comes in. Here are the players in tiers 9 and tiers 10. These are the bottom two tiers. In tier 9, Siakam, Draymond Green, Ooh. Derek White, who plays the Cavaliers tonight, Paolo Bancaro, Mikael Bridges, Laurie Markkinen, and Zion Williamson. That's tier 9. Those players, like 35 to 42. Tier 10 now. This is the last tier of his top 50. Desmond Bain, Scotty Barnes, Brandon Ingram, Franz Wagner, Drew Holiday, Alperin Sengun of Houston, Julius Randle, and Jaron Jackson. My big picture, and I know you guys are just kind of seeing this for the first time as opposed to seeing this earlier. If you want to argue one of the guys is better than Scotty Barnes, sure, I'll Uh, listen. I probably would have both Darius and Jarrett over Scotty Barnes at this point, and I think there's a very good argument to be made that Evan Mobley should be over Scotty Barnes too. If you want to tell me that they're better than Julius Randle, I'll listen. I think it's a debate to be had. I think if you want to tell me Franz Wagner is a little too high, I'll listen too. But at the end of the day, if we're arguing whether Darius Garland, who's played a max contract, is a bubble top 50 guy, I say we need more from Darius. If we say Evan Mobley is a bubble top 50 guy, maybe you guys think he's way higher. I'm looking at it. If he's a bubble top 50 guy, I think we need a little more from Evan. 
And I think Jarrett maxed out what he is. This is the best version of Jarrett Allen. And he's right in that 45 to 55 conversation. But if you only have one top 15 guy and one guy who solidified himself, a bona fide top 50 guy, we may have to reevaluate the ceiling of this Cavs team. I don't think you win a championship with one top 50 guy, one bona fide, surefire, unquestionable top 50 guy. Do you guys disagree with where Darius should be ranked or not ranked? Or do you, can you make a compelling case that one of those three guys should be a certified lock over any of the guys well, that this, were on that list? This sort of illustrates what you and I were talking about on the Cavs podcast a couple weeks ago about when everyone was screaming, trade Darius, trade Darius, trade Darius. I'm saying, guys, I don't think he has the value that you think he does. He's got a max contract, biggest contract in team history. And by the way, I'm not for trading Darius even without that. But I, I, I just... You're I, bringing I, up a different point. Yeah, I'm, I'm making yeah. a different point here. Of the value, the trade value around the league isn't what you think it is. He's an undersized point guard with a massive contract with a long injury history. And now, and I don't, I mean, Kevin O'Connor is not the authority on NBA, but there's one guy's opinion. He's not even a top 50 player. What do you think you're going to get for this? Like, you're not going to, the return you're going to get on him is not even close to what he provides you on this team. So, I, I mean, that was the first thing I thought of when I saw him. I'm like, well, that kind of proves the point we were making on the podcast. The trade value around the league just isn't there right now. I still believe in Darius. I think he's an excellent talent. I think he's a great player. I think he's probably better without another ball dominant guard next to him. But, again, what we are saying earlier in the show, the best version of the Cavs is they have to figure it out and play together. And if that means sacrificing a little bit, I think I would have him on that list. I would have Darius over some of those guys you're talking about. I think he is a top 50 player in the NBA. Um, but it's, 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 it's when you lay it out in those terms, it's interesting how low he is. And I have to say, like, I was, from day one, I was one of the guys saying Evan Mobley will be a number one on a championship-level team. That's how much I believe in this guy. That's how good I think he's going to be. That's what scouts were telling me going into the draft. And, and he doesn't mean he's not going to get there. But he hasn't progressed to the level yeah. that I thought that he would to this point. That's fair. And real quick, besides for each other, I'm not saying Darius shouldn't be in there. I'm saying he's in that conversation. I think you make an argument. If you want to say he's above one of those guys, I'm all for hearing that, that discussion. He's probably got the biggest contract of all those But I don't, I, I don't think he's necessarily a lock. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't <laughs> yeah. think it's Darius Garland certified 100% unquestioned top 50 guy. Types, what do you say? Why is it always money with you? Because expectations gotta, come with money. You gotta earn your. You gotta earn your. Darius keys. is the top fifty player. He definitely deserves to be on that list because the 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 healthy version of Darius. If you actually take everything that he's done in his career, I think it's a lot better than a lot of uh, some of those guys on that list for sure. Darius is just he still he he came off the injury and he was trying to find his way. Now, he, for some odd reason, got his blinders on. He needs to go back to being that playmaker that he once was. You know, I think he's gotten the scoring part now. He, his, he can still shoot threes. He's been shooting at a high clip these last few games. I just think his decision-making isn't great because he's turning the ball over. I think once he gets that part back, he'll be a top 50 player again. Evan Mobley... Evan Mobley just got to get confidence in his shot. If he was more of an outside shooter and just shot it more confidently and hit more, he'd easily be a top 50 player because of all the things that he does. Because def- In the NBA, you don't find too many guys that do it both offensively and defensively. Yeah. He's a great defensive player. Offensively, when it comes to shooting, is where he struggles at. Once he gets that down, he'll be a complete NBA player, which is something that you can't find. Darius, even if Dar- even at Darius' best, he's always been a defensive liability. So I think both of them will eventually get to the top 50. I still think Darius should be in there. But Evan Mobley, I think he'll be there yeah. sooner or later. On this list two years ago, Darius Garland's on uh, list. That's what say, I'm saying. All-star yeah. Darius that's Garland what I'm saying. So you, I don't is understand. 100% in there. And, and he didn't give any context to how he yeah. ranked. So that's why I don't want to, like, I can't believe he put this player over. I mean, Scotty Barnes, we've talked about a 100 times. I didn't think he should make the all-star team over Jared Allen. I think he's a little overrated. His stats are inflated being on a uh, bad Toronto team. But I agree that Darius, if he's in there, do you guys, with tier 10, he's on that last tier. Would you put him over any of the tier 9 guys? And we pulled the tier 9 list again. Yeah, so you see me. Uh, yeah, these are tier 9 guys, the second to lowest tier. And then we'll, we'll see if he fits. I do think Darius probably should be in here. But these are tier nine. Would you put Darius Garland over any of these these guys? Mikael Bridges. Boy, marketing sticks out, doesn't he? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I you. didn't want to say it, but yeah. <laughs> marketing really sticks out on that list. Now, nah, I would have really heard if Kyler Sexton was on that list. I'd be like, 
Sexton's not on it. Tyler Hero's not on it. I saw a lot of Miami fans mad that Tyler. It's not just Cavs were omitted. Like obviously everyone oh, outside the top all, fifty. All, everyone's gonna yell and scream yeah. at lists like this. The only person I can think of is Bridges. That's the only person outside of that, and that's a hard fight for me. I, th- I mean Bridges. Uh, that's Bridges is, is really good. That's what I'm saying. That's a hard fight for me. But I think if he's on here, he's a tier ten guy. Yeah. So let's see the tier ten guys real quick. So this is the tier ten guys according to Kevin O'Connor: Desmond Bain, Scotty Barnes, Brandon Ingram, Franz Wagner, Drew Holiday, Sangoon, Randall, and Jaron Jackson. Holiday probably makes more than Darius. Holiday does make more. He's off the hook. Yeah. Stop. <laughs> the man's making Stop 30. Count they money. He's making thirty-four million dollars this year. Is he a thirty-four million dollar player right now? Who? Darius. He gonna be for the next three games. <laughs> but Ty, Ty, so you said you said he definitely be on here. Who who would you replace with with Darius Garland? Scotty Warr. Uh, I I agree. Like yeah. I'm I'm all for I'm all for that. Jason, would he be your uh, replacement as well? Scotty Barnes. I mean I. I don't know if Franz Wagner deserves to be on there. Yeah, him too. That's the two that I, that sticks out to me. Either one of those guys. I I, I, I think Darius should be on the list. Yeah. I think right now he should be on the list. Probably in that 48 to 50. Scotty range. Bars and Wagner should be on. This should be Tyler Hero and... And, oh. um, and there's probably other guys I, I didn't see, but I think to the big picture. So we'll, we'll end with this before we move on to a little football. Let's say Darius is on that list in that tier 10, right? Mm-hmm. Can you win a championship... With one guy who's a ten to fifteen ish player in Donovan Mitchell, and your second best player be a forty five to fifty guy. Yeah, I know somebody that did it. His Who? name is Giannis Antetokounmpo. Because Drew Holiday is the last on that list, and I don't know where Giannis is on that list. So yeah, Giannis is three, yeah. Yeah, two or three. Yeah, but also Giannis. The answer is yes. But Giannis was two or three, no, not ten the to answer fifteen. Is no. The answer is yes. The answer is it's no. been listen in the past. Fifth twenty something years, it's been three guys. It's been three teams that's did it with one great player and a bunch of just role players. Dirk Nowinski did it, Kawhi Leonard did it, and Giannis Antetokounmpo did it. So there it is. The difference in those three you name, those three, the season they won it, were top five guys unquestioned. Donovan. Well, never mind. <laughs> pull, pull, pull up the list one more time. Never just, mind. Just to go over the top Can't six even for, go for over KLC. That. Can't even go and over I don't that. think there's really an argument. See, pull up the big tag board again. But he had Jokic <laughs> one. Giannis and Embiid two. Okay. Lucas, Steph, SGA, four, five, six, and some number numerical order. LeBron, Kawhi, Tatum, and Booker. I mean, any argument with those being your top? What's that? Top 10? No. I don't think so. I mean, I don't, you, you can quibble about the order. But. Giannis should be number one, but outside of all of that, the rest of it, I'm cool with. So you don't have a top 10 guy, and your second best is, is top 45 to 50. That does not win tough, championships. Tough recipe to that win That does not win championships in the NBA. I just told not you. impossible. I just told you what happened. It's not impossible. You can if you have a top three guy. But I don't think you're going to make the case Donovan's a top three guy right now. Dirk was that good when he won it all? Yeah. yeah. Probably and, not top three, but he was. And, I mean, that that is the – we've talked about it before. That is the one series you can put <laughs> on LeBron and say, yeah. you blew that. That should it's have been It's a black mark on his win. resume. That the only real black mark. Yeah. <laughs> all right, Earl, you ready to talk a little football? My bad. Me and back here working, so. <laughs> LeBron, you told LeBron he blew that series. All right, get buckets with your first bet on FanDuel, America's number one sports book, because right now new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 if your bet wins. Bet on all your favorite NBA players and teams with quick bets, live same game parlays, exclusive props, and more. Just visit FanDuel.com slash UCSS and shoot your shot. FanDuel, official sports book partner of the NBA. So... I sent Earl a couple ideas for topics today, and I mentioned uh, a rumor I saw that Jonathan Allen of the Washington Commanders could be a trade candidate for teams across the league because they're going to rebuild with Dan Quinn now. I see the rundown come out, and it had Josh Allen of the Jaguars. And I was like, huh, where's where's this rumor coming from? So I Google, like, Jaguars, Josh Allen, trade rumors. (laughs) <laughs> can't find anything. 
He's not franchise tagged yet. Deadline's 4 o'clock today, but nothing had come up. So I text Earl. I'm like, Earl, where'd you see this Josh Allen thing? I sent you about Jonathan Allen. And he's like, no, nah, no, nah, you definitely sent Josh. So I went to my email, and I said Jonathan. But because Josh Allen has not been tagged yet, <laughs> Earl admitted that that is his dream outcome for the Browns this offseason, somehow finding a way to acquire Josh Allen from the Jacksonville Jaguars. So we'll talk about Jonathan Allen in a sec. Let's start with Josh Allen. He has not been franchise tagged yet, Tyvis. We've talked about him in previous shows. Y'all can glance. Y'all, y'all, boy, the reach that be going on in here. There's, <laughs> there's no, well, this is, let's just skip this because there's no way that Josh Allen is not getting tagged or not getting a deal with Jacksonville. It would be absolutely insane for him to not stay there. I mean, listen, look at his stats from last year. Now, don't get me wrong. He wants to come to the Cleveland Browns to play opposite of Miles Garrett and they don't win a Super Bowl. Shame on the Cleveland Browns. They should blow up the whole thing because you got a dominant defensive line there that's actually very productive. You'll finally have your piece opposite of Miles Garrett that can get things done. However, this scenario is not going to happen. I did kind of raise an eyebrow when I saw it on the rundown. I seen it on the rundown, we, too, and I'm just like, doing? I, I was like, you know what? I guess we just pulling straws here. Like, I, it's March. Yeah. Well, the, yeah, so the Josh Allen thing. <laughs> now, Earl, Jonathan we Allen, it, it we came, can have a conversation it, about. It came from Earl's <laughs> deepest, darkest desires of what he wants the Browns to do this offseason. Oh, now, we know all about Earl's deepest, darkest desires. <laughs> yeah. Uh, hey, that boy working overtime, <laughs> wasn't he? <laughs> that boy Earl got uh, caught up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, would you like to comment? <laughs> I, I'm just trying to produce the show, man. I kept the strings for no reason. Oh, boy, Jason put him in the spot. Well, Jay, Jay did it yesterday, too. Jay, Jay kind of put him on, on the spot yesterday, too. But the Jonathan Allen thing, there is some potential viability to a trade between the Cleveland Browns and the Washington Commanders. Jonathan Allen has two <laughs> years left on his deal. They're in a rebuild. They just hired Dan Quinn. They just gave Deron Payne a defensive tackle, $22.5 million a year. Mm-hmm. Allen's 29 years old and will be 29 during the season. Still productive. Numbers down a little bit from last season, but the commander's defense in totality was a complete catastrophe, so I'm willing to kind of overlook that. He does have a pretty big cap hit this, this upcoming season and next season, Tyvis. Mm. I'll, t- I'll save my thoughts for the end here because I, I kind of have a, a second, secondary idea to the whole Jonathan Allen preposition here but we've seen what Jim Schwartz has done with defensive tackles in the past any defensive tackle that comes into his system seems to have its best season Mm -hmm. Fletcher Cox Jeffrey Simmons and I'll even throw Jordan Elliott into that mix different caliber of players we're talking all pro guys (coughs) but Jordan Elliott was a guy who went from a nobody to a guy who's going to make a decent change uh, a decent check in free agency this offseason if the commanders are willing to listen Mm -hmm. would you be interested in possibly having that discussion if you were the Browns about acquiring Jonathan Allen, the two-time Pro Bowl defensive tackle? First off, shout out to the commander's new GM, Adam Peters. Adam Peters and I have met multiple times in my San Francisco career. He literally hired and fired me literally about nine (laughs) times. So we have a really good relationship. Shout out to you, Adam Peters. Um, Can we get him on the show? Are you, are you that tight with him? No, I ain't that tight uh, with him, man. He was the one. Oh, that he I, fired you nine he was times. The, yeah, he was the one that I tell you. So you you called me up here to give me my bonus because you see how well I've been doing. And he, we just laughed about it. He said, "Nope, Tyvis, we letting you go, but we'll bring you back on Monday." So <laughs> but anyways, uh, I think that Jonathan, Jonathan Allen is a partner. Yeah, Jonathan Allen. I got me thinking of Josh Allen now. Jonathan Allen would be a great addition to the to the Cleveland Browns. It, the cap hit thing, like we already trying to. Like make it, is, this will be considered your splash move. This would be your splash move. His cap hit for this season is about twenty one million. His cap hit for next season is twenty three million. Don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. Him on the defensive line, him Dalvin, Miles, and Alex Wright is fine. That would be a really good defensive line. That can be a productive defensive line. You got a player who's had production or that's been good in the NFL. He get with Jim Schwartz, he'll probably have his best season. But that, I don't know if that cap hit is worth. I don't know if he's worth. What is uh? Can I? Do y'all so happen to have uh, Dalvin Thomas's season stats from this year on tag board? Do we ha- uh, not on tag board? We have an assistant. Steve, assistant you want to pull up Dalvin Thomas's season stats? I know he had three sacks. They all came against Arizona. See, I mean, they get twenty tackles, three sacks. If they if they went with this move, I wouldn't be mad 
add in. It would be okay. I don't think it's a home run. Like, if I'm going to make a splash move, I wouldn't call this a splash move, if that makes sense. I think he'd come in here and be very productive. I think Jim Schwartz would get the best out of him. I think he instantly makes the defensive line better. But I don't think that helps you get to the Super Bowl, if that makes sense. Jason? If you get one splash move, I'd rather be at receiver and make – but but those options are dwindling. So – it's so hard to say. I, I personally, I, I'm just kind of getting the sense that they'll probably they're going to try and bring Cedarius back. I think. Okay. I think he's an end though. This is a tackle. This is a little different position. You're right. I'm thinking Josh Allen. <laughs> See, <laughs> I'm telling you, Earl, 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 Earl had tainted the water they here. They messed up I, everything. I would, with Josh Allen I would, I would. I would not pursue tackle. I would not. I think that there's better avenues to spend dollars on to there's more pressing areas of need Dalvin Tomlinson was the big splash move last year at that spot that was the that was a big money hire I would, don't know that I would do that two years in a row I would look at end but I do think Zedarius is coming back and I, I think you would look at receiver although again those options are dwindling so the splash move might be drafting a, sec, a second round receiver in the draft. That I just, might be the splash move. I just think that if you're going to go tackle, I'd rather Christian Wilkins, a guy who had, what, 10 sacks, 9 sacks last yeah. season. Like, that's something. Now, that, his cap hit's going to be even higher than but I got, down, but, but that's a, it's your splash play. That's yeah. a bigger splash move to me. Like, that's a guy that's ultimately productive. That's a guy that you can think of just – Pittsburgh, they got Cam Hayward who plays defensive tackle in, in Miles, or not Miles, TJ. Now you're getting Miles with a really good guy that's a good pass rusher that's very productive in the interior. Now that does mean you can't be double team or triple team to that side anymore. Now you absolutely are upgrading things. Like that's, that. okay, that's worth that. Mm-hmm. But if it's not that, like five sacks, like what did, what did Jordan Elliott have? Like what did Mo Hurst have? Well, like, he did have nine sacks two years ago. Who did? Allen. Okay. So this, his numbers were down this season. Now, the commander's defense in total was just bad. They didn't get many sacks as a team. He'd been way more productive in the past. He had 31 quarterback hits in 2021. I mean, that's really I mean, he, good. He had a pat, and PFS. Not He's the a end good of, player. Don't get me PFS wrong. PFS grades really are not good. the end-all, be-all. <laughs> he had a 92 pass rush grade in 2021 and a plus 80 pass rush grade in the three seasons prior to last season. Last year was a down year across the board. Had this yeah. been last year, we would all be saying, yes, please. Yeah. Come, I mean, coming I, like off I the said, year before – in I, free agency, I think we would all be. I, I just think they've done enough. I think I'd, they're, I'd take it. The well, well, I'd take it. Let me ask you guys this, because this, this is kind of where I, I pivoted a little bit on this. Because I'm with you. I, I don't think tackle is their most pressing need, but I think it may be their biggest area to get a – I want to use this loosely, a star caliber player. If it's, Wilkins is clearly a star. Yeah. Allen, I think, is a very, very good player. I wouldn't say he's a star. Mm-hmm. But would you consider, to alleviate some of the cap hit that you bring in with Allen, Bit of a player trade. Now, not Newsom. What about Wyatt Teller? Just throwing it out. Just, just throwing it out there as, as a possibility. Would you trade Teller for Jonathan Allen straight up? Who's the backup guard? Well, they probably have to sign one because Michael Dunn is a pending free agent. But Dunn's, Dunn's probably not coming. The out. reason Washington would at least consider this is they're probably going to draft a quarterback with the second overall pick, right? Mm-hmm. Got to keep that guy up. It's healthy. Keep him standing. They need help on the offensive line. New offensive coordinator. Pass at the offense. And they already have De'Ron Payne at defensive tackle. It's not a perfect even-even cap hit. But just, I'm not just asking. Who is, who's their right guard? I don't even know who their right guard is. For Washington? Yeah. Their offensive line wasn't good. They got the most sacks in football last year. So whoever it is, Teller's an upgrade. So Teller for? Jonathan Allen. I'd take it. They would never do that, but I would take that trade. I don't think I would make that trade. I'd make the trade. Not so just you because would, I like Wyatt. You wouldn't. I'm about to say, he, he, he got personal reasons. Uh, uh, make this a poll. <laughs> would you trade Wyatt Teller for Jonathan yes. Allen straight up? Yep. Why, would, why wouldn't you do it? Because I think you have a lot of questions. I, I, <laughs> It, it's not a crazy proposal. It's, no, not, it's, it's well, not a crazy proposal. It's not at all. It's not a crazy proposal. And and I don't and, and the reason I hedge on it is because I don't know how long the Browns can continue to pay two guards 16, 17 yeah. million or whatever it is, Betonio and, and Wyatt are making. Wyatt's been banged up now two years in a row. I don't know how much trade value he has at twenty nine, but from the Browns perspective, I think he's very valuable to what they do in the scheme that they run. He's so good scheme, when he's healthy. Schemes changer. 
Well, that's true. On 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 the pulling guards, though, like, and, and you bring up a good point. Like, how much is the, how much are they going to do that? I don't know. Yeah. With I'm him, no, but it's fair. It's a good point because yeah. one thing that he's really good at is he's the the kickout guard on on those pull runs. He's phenomenal at that. He's terrific at that. And and if you're going to bring Nick back, and if you still want to have a substance, a semblance of a run game, <laughs> and I don't know that there's a, a ready made replacement for him. Can Nick Harris be your starting right guard? I don't think so. He's small. He's a pending free agent, too. Yeah, but you, you can know bring, what the, bring him back. You know cheap, what this yeah. means? It's time for those Buckeyes to step up. Luke Whippler can definitely get the job done, okay? Now, the problem is, the only reason can that he it, play guard? Could I'm sure he guard? could. He's a he's centers can play guard. I don't know if Nick Harris can. He's small. So, he's so what? Small. I, I, I'm talking about as far as, like, Getting in there, I don't like. He ain't got to worry about responsibility. Like, if you're a center, you know everything. Yeah. So I know that he could come in and know what and he, he has. I mean, he, he, also draft draft he knows yeah, what he has. Guards. That's one of the positions that's most easily translatable yeah. from the college. I, my only. I'm not even saying I would. I just think it's an interesting my, thought the, process. The here only I reason, think it does benefit both teams. The only reason I push back on it is if you tell if if Bill Callahan was still here, I tell you go ahead. But now that he gone and they got a new offensive line, I I, I don't know. Because I don't know, I don't know what to expect yeah. from this guy. I don't know. I don't know if Washington wants a 29-year-old guard who's had a lot of leg problems the last couple of years either. Who's well, making 17 million dollars? Well, but said, they save money because it's technically a lower cap it than. Well, I said, Allen. I said, if I'm Washington, I would not take that trade. But if they're willing to do it, I would because yeah, from the Browns' perspective. So you would, from the Browns' perspective, yeah. you wouldn't. I, it's actually, it's a good question. <laughs> I, my initial reaction was no, but the more I think through it, I think you maybe you do have to consider it. I just don't know that – I guess I'm not opposed to moving wide in the right situation. I just don't know that defensive tackle is a big area of need right now. I, I think that there's better positions to to target for that if you're going to make that move. But also, I don't know if a right guard is going to bring you back to position of need. And, and the reason I thought Washington was, A, you know, we're talking about Allen, but they are about to draft a quarterback. Yeah. They have the most sacks in the NFL last season. Yeah. Any help on the offensive line is much needed. It saves them money. And, you know, they already have Deron Payne at defensive tackle. Obviously, yeah. I mean, two is a it's, luxury. It's not outrageous. It's not outrageous. Fun thought exercise. Yeah. You've, you've had some wacky ones, but you call them that this is insane. I usually tell you when I, when, when I yeah. know something could be plausible, yeah. I'll give you that this, this could actually happen. I don't think this there, one will happen. There, this is a compliment to you. There are very few people... Because I normally roll my eyes at the whole trade game and trade scenarios because I don't know what these guys are thinking. But Mike has hit me now with probably three or four that are like, man, that makes a lot of sense. And very few people normally come up with trade scenarios that make me say, like, the reason, wow, that's, that's not bad. The reason being, and I'm not diminishing, you can hide a guard. Tackle is the one. Tackle and center is the two that you can't, or yeah. the three positions you can't hire. Both tackle and center, you can hide a guard with good tackle play or center play. You could just have a double team on that side. Like, that can happen. So that's why, to me, a guard is somebody that is – you can move on from, you can trade. But that tackle position, as we know, you the Browns can, if, have three right now, though. Ooh, Ika, Tomlinson. Oh, defensive tackle. Yeah. I thought they meant offensive tackle. Yeah, no, sorry, yeah. Sorry. I'm talk, I'm they mean, only have two under contract right now. That's what I'm saying. It's just Ika and Tomlinson. That's what I'm saying. So, like, for me, yeah, I'd be fine with making that trade if I'm the Cleveland Browns because I'm going to get a lot of productivity out of, a lot of production out of my defensive tackle position now that I got him and Dalvin and Miles, like that instantly makes my defensive line really freaking good. You, that you can, might be swaying me I, on this. I, <laughs> I, I, I would, I would say I'm, yes. Uh, yeah. I, if, if someone wanted to say no, I think that's a totally reasonable answer. I, I would say yes to this potential trade proposal because at the end of the day, as good as Jonathan Allen's been in Washington, if he can even be 5% better under Jim Schwartz, he will. I mean, he will. getting a top seven defensive tackle in football to pair alongside Miles Garrett. Which Jim is so hard to find. And he's by far the best pass rushing tackle Miles had ever played with. And that's the one thing this year that the defensive tackles were certainly serviceable. Like, mm -hmm. they were good. I have no, no complaints with what they got. But they were better against the run than they were against the pass. Most of their pressure came from Miles Garrett and the outside. Tomlinson's three sacks all came against Arizona. Mo, uh, Mo Hurst was their best interior pass rusher. And Mo Hurst is a good player. Jonathan Allen is a much better yeah. pass rusher. Yeah, you. you that could be that could be a dangerous are proposition. A compelling case. I guess I'd probably have to change. Oh, what do you think that. on that? Would you do it? 
I, I was uh, optimizing the videos. I didn't hear nothing y'all was talking Why, about. Wyatt Teller for Jonathan Allen. <laughs> Wyatt Teller for... Hell yeah, I'll do Jonathan that. Allen, <laughs> yeah, Jonathan Allen, not Jonathan. Jonathan, Jonathan. Yeah, I'll do that. Uh, okay. So that's, that's a quick... What did the poll say? Do we put a poll up? So, Ant got the poll up, and it says, would you trade Jonathan Eller for Teller? 51% says yes. 49% says no. If you got a 50-50 split on a trade, it's probably a halfway decent proposal. Yeah. It's not, t- it's not bad. What was the results? 51 yes, 49 no. That's actually uh, The more I think about it. Don't tell Wyatt. I really like Wyatt. The we, more want, I, we want his wife to come on the show, too, so don't mention this to her. The more I think about it, it, it is compelling. I just feel like there's more pressing positions of need than defensive tackle. Yeah. If I don't disagree gonna, with if that. You're going to trade one of your best players because I, like I still consider Wyatt one of their best players. I do too. I do. I just think guard is one of the more replaceable it is. spots. It is. It is. It is. I, what really gets me is what you said when you brought up the fact that they got to. You don't know how long they're going to continue to pay him, and I'm like, what I respect about Wyatt is Wyatt didn't the whole offensive line get hurt, but Wyatt last yeah. year. Yeah. Yeah. And why Wyatt, and he did Wyatt get hurt was too. hurt yeah. too, but he he's knew. a warrior. Yeah. See, Absolutely and that's, warrior. And that's the one thing that I like, and like I. Like I said, guards can be hidden. Yeah. That's one thing Listen, I learned. In a, in a perfect world, hidden. if Washington would even entertain, like, Jack Conklin or Jed Wills for that, like, that's – but I just I don't think that's realistic. If so. people, and not to go off on a tangent, if people knew what Wyatt and Joel went through last year to play. Absurd. Crazy. Warriors. And Betonio and that – to come back out and finish that Houston game, I was talking to him after that game. I don't think people have any, the man had a high, like a not not a not a Trevor Lawrence high ankle sprain. He had a legitimate high ankle sprain, and he played through it in a blowout. Like that guy is unbelievable, and should spend his entire career with the Browns. It's looking like he will. He should retire a Brown. He'll be in the Ring of Honor someday. I have so much respect for Joel Batonio <coughs> and what he stands for. Uh, should be in the Hall of Fame, actually. I don't know if he will be or not. I don't know if he'll make it. You're talking it. about Wyatt or Joel? Joel. 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 Yeah. Joel should be. It's going to be hard for guards, and he doesn't have a ton of the postseason accolades, accolades yeah. or anything. Like that. He's got a lot of Pro Bowls, but what a dude, man. And I, my respect, I already had a ton of respect for him. It went up so high talking to him after the Houston game, knowing what he went through to play in that game that was a blowout that they knew they weren't going to win. And for him to finish that out with a high ankle sprain is unbelievable. He's That's a warrior. All. Speaking of warriors, how about the Broncos owner being a warrior for deciding to take an $85 million cap hit? And Earl, I know we got to get a read in. And then we'll talk about the Russell Wilson situation and his potential prospects of joining the Pittsburgh Steelers. Yeah, absolutely. And as always, don't forget to subscribe to the Ultimate Cleveland Sports Show. Uh, become a member, man. Get all the perks, the emojis, the emojis, the badges, access to overtime, ring the bell, hit the like button, stay in the know of everything that we got going on. Again, subscribe to the Ultimate Cleveland Sports Show. So as you guys saw the news yesterday, the Denver Broncos have released Tyvis Powell's best friend, Russell Wilson. He's going to uh, be free to sign with any team he desires. <laughs> And he said he's willing to take essentially a veteran minimum contract now because Denver will be paying him about $40 million (laughs) per year over the next two years not to play for the Denver Broncos. So before we talk about any potential landing spots for Russell Wilson and his potential fit with the Pittsburgh Steelers, Tyvis, were you surprised at how this all ended up in Denver, especially considering the fact that Denver is now willing to eat a record-setting $85 $85 million in dead cap, which is twice as much as the previous record, which was Atlanta for Matt Ryan. $85 million in dead cap. Are you surprised they just said, Russell, <coughs> thank you, but uh, have a good day? It's a little surprising to me because Russell is a really good dude, um, great locker room guy, great motivator, always thinks positively. So from that standpoint, he's a guy that you want in your locker room. Um, I guess I'm not shocked at the 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 play, even though his numbers is not bad at all. I think that Sean Payton looked at him and just said to himself, I can't get to where I really want to go with this guy. Mm-hmm. And a lot of the times, a lot of franchises and a lot of organizations are handicapped because they gave out a bad contract and they don't want to feel like, like I feel like okay, so you lose the you lose the locker room over stuff like this. Like it's like the Jets. The Jets when they had Zach Wilson playing and they no good and well Zach Wilson wasn't good. 
but he was the second pick of the draft. I got to play him. Like, yeah. But the players is like the dude behind him is is better. Like play the dude behind him. We trying to win games. Like you can't continue to be handicapped and handcuffed to somebody just because of a bad contract. So I actually applaud Sean Payton for looking at it and saying I don't care about the money. I'm trying to win at this because you know at a head coach you only get like two or three years. I'm trying to win and I need me a guy that I think that I can win with and I don't think Russell's that guy. So. Moving on from him, I actually applaud it because a lot of coaches and a lot of organizations would have never made that move. So, oh, I, Russell land on his feet. He'll go somewhere and he'll be a really decent quarterback somewhere for sure. I think he'll up. He's an upgrade over a lot of other quarterbacks in the NFL. I think when he played the Browns, he definitely made us look foolish. So he still show you he got the ability to be productive. Um, but I, I'm not mad at Denver for wanting to be great, for daring to be great. I can't think of another scenario where the head coach won over the quarterback. When does a franchise ever pick a head coach over a quarterback? Especially a quarterback that have invested that well, much money. Well, you got to think about this. Who paid, who who traded for for Russell Wilson? John Elway. John mm-hmm. Elway's not there no more. Who was the head coach when Russell Wilson was, went there? Oh, Lord. Hackett. He's Hackett. not there yeah. anymore. Yeah. Is it a new ownership group, too? And when I, it, when was it, it a new? Uh, I don't think so. No, was, I think the new ownership came before. It was, was right before. It was like right before, I think. So I, know, I know they're new. I'm just not yeah. sure how new they are. So I think they looked at it and said, this, the, GM's a, the GM and the head coach said, this ain't, this yeah. ain't my dude. I ain't got no loyalty to him. Yeah. yeah, he's under contract with us, but he's not who we want, and we're not. he doesn't fit what we're trying to do. Yeah, that's a good point. So they was like, let's move on. I just... I'm I'm shocked that they made the move. I, I'm not. I, I didn't think they'd cut him. I thought he'd be on the bench for sure. I'm I, I, I'm shocked. I was shocked last year when it was trending this way. Let's put it. I, it became pretty obvious. Really? This was gonna Were you shocked? Because yeah. I, I told you about it though. I have ADD. What'd you say? <laughs> I told you that he's a good person. He's not a really good quarterback. When you commit the type of money that is invested in that. For the ownership to eat that kind of money, that's pretty shocking. Is it this <laughs> the dude who's the owner? Wasn't he like the owner? Walmart. Maker? Walmart? Yeah. Oh, he got it. He ain't tripping. I don't care how Listen. much money you got. Take 85 that. million? Take that. 85 million a lot. That's a of lot money. of money. But this, but this is the thing, though. They, they learned a valuable lesson out of this whole thing. The Broncos did. You never pay somebody before you let him before he steps foot on the field. That's they own. You know what? You know what? They shouldn't have did that. I know. And, and, and when, well, I ain't gonna say the jury is it out there. We don't know. We but don't you, know. You know what's crazy about the the Wilson contract? The eighty five million they owe him is from the extension they signed him to when he came to Denver. Yeah. Which kicks in this season, by the yeah. way. He played his first two years in Denver on his Seattle contract. That two hundred fifty million dollar extension he signed <coughs> starts this year. He's not gonna play a single down for them. And when you look at the overall body of work for Russell Wilson in Denver, 11 of 19 and 30 starts in two years. His traditional box score numbers look fine. You know, 26 touchdowns, eight interceptions last year. But when you watch the games, he was a shell of the former Russell Wilson we saw in Seattle, who was leading the Seahawks deep in playoffs to a Super Bowl alongside with a great defense. Okay, because I'm about to say. I alongside know some a great defense. I know some friends of that is no, no, it, lead. Lead? They, he led them. He helped lead. Let me refresh. Okay. A combination <laughs> of great right. talent in Seattle allowed the Seahawks to win a Super Bowl. <laughs> but Russell Wilson was a really, really good quarterback for a long time in the NFL. At this point of his career, he's not the same kind of player he was. Don't text Sherm right now. I, ain't I, 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 I Listen, I don't need the Legion of Boom to come after me. <laughs> he said nothing, man. If Sherm wants Sher- to sue me, Sherm got just... other problems to worry yeah, about. Yeah, he does. I, hey, I Sherm, I'm available. I, you know what? If you need a chauffeur, I'm available. What happened with Sherm? You didn't see? No. You didn't see? Sherm did a hard 48, what he tells me. You, I got to look this up. Did you guys hard, talk for a second. He did a hard 48. We talked. We played Call of Duty a couple of days ago. We je- we laughed about it. He did a hard 48. I don't know what that means. What's a hard He 48? did 48 hours in jail. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh, oh, I see what you're saying. Oh, yeah. yeah. If you need a chauffeur. I told him, if you need a chauffeur. You've you already know, done I, it. You can do it again. Come on now. You know my, you just seen the whip skills. <laughs> uh, all right, so real quick. So, Russ, I, I think we're all in agreement. He's not the same quarterback he was in 2013, <coughs> 2019, 2020 when he was with the Seahawks. I also don't think he's a washed-up corpse of a quarterback that can't help a team win in the future. Mm-hmm. Pittsburgh's a team that we have talked about with a couple of these quarterbacks floating around the free agent market. We did something with Justin Fields as a potential landing spot. How would you guys feel if the Pittsburgh Steelers were to acquire 
in free agency, Russell Wilson, for essentially a million dollars on the veteran minimums, not going to eat anything into their cap. We saw what they did last year with Kenny Pickett, Mason Rudolph, and Mitchell Trubisky. How scared of the Steelers would you be if Pittsburgh was the landing spot? <coughs> Essentially, I would be very scared because of the fact that he played for the Broncos and he did us the way he did the Cleveland Browns. Essentially, he would be putting himself back into another situation he was in Seattle where they have a really great defense, they have a really good talent and skill positions. I just can't mess it up. I don't think he does a terrible job of messing things up. I just think that in big, big moments, sometimes he doesn't make the plays that's asked of him. Um, but I think he could be very good in, 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 with Pittsburgh Steelers. They got a really good run game, same thing they had in Seattle. And they got some really good wide receivers with, same thing they had in Seattle. So I think he'd be fine. Um, I just think it's about utilizing him correctly. That defense, one, wins a lot of their games. I mean, Kenny Pickett has what? The comeback drive or winning game, winning drive, whatever the heck yeah. it is. He's like 13 so, touchdowns in 13 yeah, starts. Yeah, something ridiculous like that. that it's, can't, I can't believe it's, it's, a, it's a stat that he actually recorded. So if he has that type of success there with that defense, I believe Russell Wilson could do the same thing. He is significantly better than anybody they have on, I agree. on the roster. Right I agree. Now. Significantly better. And he makes this, if that were to happen. And when I was at the Combine, the feeling was that they were going to roll with Kenny Pickett. Which is crazy. It, it is crazy. It's batshit crazy. Now, and I hope you do it. Please. Now. Do it. You know, what are you going to get out of Russ? Two years maybe? So, I mean, are you willing to pull the plug on Kenny Pickett. Pickett's career in Pittsburgh? for the next two years, I, I don't know. And, and maybe there's a way to put Pickett on the bench. I don't know that I see this as possible. They already did it. Put him on the bench for two years. Put him on the bench for two years and let Russ go for the next two years and then go back to him. I, I, don't, I don't know if that's really feasible or not. But for today, for the moment, Russell Wilson is significantly better than Kenny Pickett, yeah, the quarterback. And he makes close. the Steelers – he makes the Steelers – a threat in the division again because right now Steelers are fourth in division. As long as their quarterback is who that is, yeah. they're fourth in division. Would they finish third? They finished third because Cincinnati, Cincinnati. Joe had Burrow their issues. Hurt. But, yeah. but if everybody's healthy, obviously you have to factor in health. If, if everybody's healthy, the Steelers are the fourth best team in that division just based on quarterback play. Yeah. But you put Russ Wilson on that team, they're back in contention. I agree. For, for we talked what Cleveland did and deserve all the credit for winning games, 11 games this season with five different quarterbacks. And they deserve, oh, I guess four, they started five, but they won with four. The fact that the Steelers made the playoffs with the quarterback carousel of Kenny Pickett, Mason Rudolph, and Mitchell Trubisky is not as impressive as what the Browns did, but that's a hell of an accomplishment yeah. for three quarterbacks who are all, excuse my French, they're all ass. They all suck. Yeah. Like All three of those guys are not starting caliber quarterbacks <laughs> in the NFL. And I say that as someone who can't throw a football like 30 yards myself, I know when I see bad quarterback play, Turn on any Steelers game and you were seeing atrocious quarterback play. They still won 10 games because they're good defensively. They're extremely well coached. They have some sort of magic curse over Bull. And every time Bull says they can't win 10 games in a season, <laughs> they find a way to – it makes no sense. And they got weapons. And to your point earlier, as long as Russ could be a – I don't want – game manager is not the right word. But as long as he can just get the guys who need the ball the ball in mm -hmm. a timely, efficient manner – they got weapons. I mean, we saw what uh, George Pickens did in that Monday Night Football game. Take a 71-yard slant route. And you give Pickens an actual NFL quarterback. Jalen Warren, I mean, in the second game, their only touchdown came on that 75-yard sweep. Like, they have explosive playmakers. Mm -hmm. Deontay Johnson's no slash. Pat Fryer moved the tight end. Yeah. Their offensive line isn't great, but it got better throughout the season. I mean, They you, have the, the building blocks of a team that could be a legitimate threat, I not think, just in the division, but in the conference, if they had competent quarterback play. And I still think Russell Wilson – is capable of being a competent quarterback. Now, I say all that to say, even if they got Russell Wilson, I'm not terrified. I'm, I'm not even – if scared's the barometer and terrified's like, oh, my God, <coughs> I'm like – In the middle? No, I'm, I'm closer to not being scared than I am to being terrified even with that. If that makes sense, from a Browns perspective, I would have to see what else they, what else, what other moves they make. Because if you get, if you sign Russell Wilson, that means you still got your draft picks. So and, and you have and, all your cash and picks. you got all your money all your because you take an event minimum. So they can become deadly. They they beef up that offensive line and they get themselves another corner outside opposite DB, of yeah. Joey Porter Jr. That is something that I, that's scary yeah. because the thing about Pittsburgh, when, when Pittsburgh went on that run at the end of the year and they started winning the game, 
Mason Rudolph came in there, and it wasn't just because of Mason Rudolph in there getting them the ball. Started running the ball. They brought attitude, and I found the, the biggest difference. That's what changed the Browns here, the attitude on the Cleveland Browns. When they went up to Seattle, not the Browns, Pittsburgh, they went to Seattle, and they just, like, completely out-physical Seattle. I was like, yeah, this team can win a lot of games. They know the recipe, and they know that they can out-physical a lot of teams. That's been, like, their motto for the past whatever. Can the Cavs borrow Jim Schwartz? He need to go. He need to go talk to him in the locker room for for, for Has sure. Has there ever been a crossover coaching, uh, like a bringing Jim Schwartz for a speech? <laughs> for a speech, probably. I, I, I made a speech, but like I don't know. That's for just a it. role? Yeah. Oh, I can't think one. Um, just Paul De Podesta <laughs> is executive. What about if it was? Uh, there have been other executives that have crossed over. I think. Well, the, yeah, the guy from the 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 Commanders. They brought in all these basketball guys to yeah. hire new yeah. coach. Yeah, that was Josh in a Harris. consultant role. Um, if it was between Justin Fields or Russell Wilson, those were the two options for the Steelers. Which, by the way, the Steelers say they're not reportedly interested in either. What Jason said about Kenny Pickett being their quarterback, that seems to be all the buzz heading into the offseason plan for the Pittsburgh Steelers. I'm not buying it personally, but if it came down to Justin Fields or Russell Wilson, which one of those two would make Pittsburgh a more legitimate threat to the Browns and the AFC North for this upcoming season, not long term, for this upcoming season. Russ. Justin Fields. You think it's Justin? I think yeah. it's Russ. I think it's Justin because of the, the the mobile aspect. He hadn't done it yet, though, at Wait. a consistent level. Ran the ball? When? Justin Fields? Yeah. Two In the years, NFL? Two years ago. Didn't he, didn't he have 1,000 yards rush? You're, you're saying he can rush. Jason's saying he's never won. When? Wait. Oh, when? Yeah. I thought you said rush. No, no, no. Lead a I franchise. I say lead a rush here. No, no, no. Lead a franchise and win. Oh, lead he, an no, franchise and no. Win. But I think under Mike Tomlin, he could get it out of him. Possibly. I can't argue that. And for the long term, you'd probably say Justin. And if you respect but. Arthur Smith as a play caller. For he'll right, he'll put him in the right position. Because that's for, one, two things Justin's never had. A, a really good head coach because... Yeah. Whatever you you want to say that. Yeah. <laughs> and a really good play caller. Yeah. Well, I think the jury's still out on Arthur Smith being a really good play caller. He had a lot of weapons to work with in Atlanta. And that, granted, their quarterback, the quarterback situation. quarterback play was not Who great. he picked. Who he picked completely handcuffed him to not being able to utilize he it. But some of the games you Mariota. see where Kyle Pitts had one target after <coughs> passing him fourth overall. Bijan only getting six, seven carries in a game. Like, some of that was inexcusable. I think if I had <laughs> to pick for this scenario, Fields or Wilson for 2024, I think Russ does make them a more dangerous threat to the Browns just because he's a plug-and-place guy. Mm. We talked about Fields in this exact situation. I'm not sold on Fields personally. I think after three years, if you have to ask, is this the guy? You got Nine out of ten times, the answer is he's not the guy. Now, there are exceptions, and I do think he's super talented, but I think he may be uh, kind of scarred mentally was, from his lack of was coaching. Was Baker the guy? No. Nope. I still don't think he's the guy. No. He's the guy. He's about to be the guy in Tampa. And let's see if Tampa wins anything. Went to the playoffs. Typically, if you have to ask, the answer is, is usually no. He is so I, I think Russ would make him a more <laughs> dangerous threat it's for this upcoming will season. Will Baker Mayfield win a Super Bowl in his career? I'd be shocked. I mean. They I, even as a backup. Well, well, that's, <laughs> <laughs> come on, what man. What kind of question is that? Yeah. What you mean? I know a guy who went further than all of those in that class. Sam Darnold. He went uh, to the Super Bowl. And what did he contribute to that? He got the defense prepared. <laughs> he held the clipboard. <laughs> he got the defense prepared to go up against Patty. But he was Patrick Mahomes of practice. Oh, Lord. There, there's still, <laughs> there are still a lot of moves to be made. So I'm going to ask this question. This is by no means a final answer by the time we come to September. But let's just say for this, the sake of this, Russell does sign with Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. Right now, based on the teams we know, the information we have currently available, Wilson on Pittsburgh, Browns is currently constructed, Bengals is currently constructed, Ravens is currently constructed. How would you rank the AFC North? <laughs> I know there's a million variables that will change come start of the season, but if you give Pittsburgh a quarterback, essentially, how would you rank those four teams, Thomas? That's so hard. It is. <laughs> <sighs> Baltimore won. Assuming health, by the way. Assuming health. <laughs> say it. You don't want to say it, but you know it's the truth. 
<laughs> Go ahead. Come on. Come on. Come on. You want me to say it for you? Cincinnati Thank two. you. Lee <laughs> <laughs> Browns three, Pittsburgh four. Uh, we are, uh, since it's a Cleveland show, I'll say we're in agreement. I know. Would well, that be crazy for thinking Cincinnati's won? No. No? Not at all. I just, my gut tells me just You like, just got to tell me the other day that I was nuts for saying the Bengals were in a tier above the Browns. Now you're saying the Bengals are number one in the division. I didn't say, I just asked, would I be crazy? I just said, would I be crazy? You guys jumped me last week. I just I said, would it be crazy? I just said, would it be crazy? Go ahead and say it. I did. I, I really did want to say that. I can see it on your face. I really, I, because, man, I just. It's because it's Joe. Like it, it, Joe and, right. and, and Jamar just make it so. That's, you're 100 percent right. God, I, <laughs> you could easily flip Baltimore and Cincinnati one. It's, it'd be funny to me because three or four is the coin flip. Yes, if they get rest, that's a coin flip. You could easily because of the fact all the guys coming off of injury. You don't know, yeah, so right. it could be. It's, it's an it's an impossible question to have any. You could. I think you could easily flip Baltimore and Cincinnati. Those are one and two, and Cleveland and Pittsburgh are three and four, and you could flip whichever order you want on three and four. <laughs> it's, <cool. laughs> it's funny because I, I really did. I could see. I could see the pain knowing what you had to say, and it just couldn't come out. And I sit here. Fighting it about like, well, you know, the Browns beat Cincinnati every year. Yeah, you know? no. but it's, just, it's it's the healthy Browns <laughs> factor versus the unknown of Deshaun, and we all yes. think and we all hope Deshaun yes. can get back to the Deshaun that the Browns need him to be. But at this point, Joe Burrow's just a better quarterback than Deshaun Watson right now. Doesn't yes. mean Deshaun can't get back to that same tier, but based off their recent performance, the clock is ahead. ticking. Yeah, on Deshaun to get back to that tier, the clock is ticking quickly. Oh, what's up next, my friend? All right, so up next, man, this came from uh, Steve <laughs> Becker. Steve balls. basically talked about a soft <laughs> article to where uh, Bryce, Bryce James possibly headed to Ohio State with a little incentive from the king, LeBron James. What y'all thoughts are? Uh, what are your thoughts on that? So if anyone didn't see the report, did you read it yet? No. Okay, so the report essentially said it came from CFB Focus that, and you can read it here, uh, one name that has come up is Florida Atlantic coach Dusty May. He is the guy LeBron is pushing, pushing for. It goes on to say word is that if OSU does end up hiring May, uh, LeBron would make a significant donation in the millions to the Buckeye basketball program, oh and God. Bryce James would end up committing to play for Dusty May and the Buckeyes. And this comes from College Football Focus on Twitter. So he's breaking a little college basketball news, or at least a nugget. Uh, guys, thoughts on not even Dustin May, but thoughts on LeBron, a noted Ohio State alum. Not alum. Not that's alum. The, that, that, that's why I went like this. Oh, listen, yeah. I, I, listen. He I'm, said he would have played at Ohio State had he gone to college, but he also he would play at Akron, Duke, UNC, yeah. Charlotte, Miami, Penn State, he Indiana. Said, he says UCLA, the right USC. thing in front of the right crowd. I think it would have been Duke or Ohio State for um, the record. I had I, and probably Duke. See, I think it's been Ohio State. I think it's considering been Ohio I played State. for the coach that recruited him. I think I got a little good, a little bit of insight on this. Okay. Listen to me right now. <laughs> Listen to me right now, man. I understand that we. He said he's making a sizable donation in the millions. In the millions, he would is what he said, according to this report. And how do we know about this coach? Right. Dusty May is a really, really good coach. He's a really good coach. So he, he, he led Florida Atlantic to the Final Four last season. Okay. He's got 120 win, 121 wins, 66 career losses. He's only been a head coach at Florida Atlantic. He was an assistant under Mike White at Florida, been an assistant coach for a while. Uh, he's big in the transfer portal. That's so mm-hmm. how we got all these guys to Florida Atlantic. He plays an open four-out, one-in system. His team's really good again this year. I actually would argue his Florida Atlantic team – this season is more talented than the team was last season, okay. despite their record not being as good, but they moved up conferences. My whole thoughts on this, if they end up hiring Dusty May, mm-hmm. Ross Bjork, new athletic director, yeah, that's what I say, Ross. comes to the conclusion that Dusty May is the right head coach, I think it would be a great hire. Okay. If they come to the conclusion that Dusty May is the right hire because LeBron James says so, I have a big issue with that. I agree with you on that. Now, we know one thing about Ross is that he's going to raise some money. Now. <laughs> he's going to swing for the fences. He's going to get, get a big-time hire. He's going to get some money in there and all of those things. Um, I, I 
mean, if you decide to go him, I'm not going to deny it because he's a good coach. I mean, if he went to the Final Four, he got a history of taking his team to, like, conference play. Yeah, like, he's only been a head coach for four or five seasons. With at FAU? At, that's the only place he's been a head coach, correct. <laughs> so he's a young guy. Okay. Young guy, yeah. Okay, I like that. I'm not, I'm not necessarily mad at that. I would have to see the other names that he gets the job over. I do know that Jake Diebler is doing an unbelievable job right now. I think he's 4-1 and one since correct. taking over. Yeah. And, you know, if he continues to win out, it's hard to go against a guy that got chemistry there, that's, whose brother played there and all of those things. Um, but if it's about the money and about the donations – and by all means, I I just I, I'm cool with it. I'll be cool with it. It wouldn't bother, it wouldn't bother me. I would totally not be surprised if LeBron is trying to politic on the backside of things. What I, is I, what is his affiliation with LeBron? Uh, Dusty May is recruiting his son to Florida Atlantic right now. Oh, but so also, that's it. but also, yeah, to my knowledge, he's from Indiana. By the way, he's not even an Ohio kid. Bryce. Bryce is a very good prospect. <laughs> it's 156 in the country right now. This isn't a top five player. Yeah. Like, it's not like you're, it's not, it's not, it's not LeBron or it's not Wemby Cooper, Yama. Cooper flag. But, yeah, yeah. It, what, it's not like, you Jason, know. I can't believe you going there right now. What? I mean, it's going to bring attention. All right. So what are we talking about? But, but at the end he, of the day, is he, he going to help you win games? He going to help us bring money. Ohio State's got plenty of money. And Ross Ross State's you, got and plenty I also, of money. You also and Ross know. Is good listen, gets let, raising money. let me let you know something. You also don't stay rich by spending the money all the time. If you can get more money, why would you not? I mean, I just watched the, I watched the guy sell his stuff for $13.86 billion. You're going to get money. You're Ohio State. You're going to make money just fine. And we we make more. You know how much we can get for selling Bryce James jerseys? Is, is Bron- and maybe the answer to this is yes. I really don't know. But is, is USC making a killing with Bronny there? Probably. I have no idea. I don't think so. Is Savannah coming? That's the real question. Is, is Savannah going to be at the game? I, Savannah ain't leaving L.A. I mean, I guess she'd come in for okay, to see her son play. That's all I did. I just she ain't moving back to Ohio. I can tell I you. I don't need her to move back. I just want to say I'm hi. Sure I just want to wave. I'm sure that they'll fly in for the games. Okay. I, 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 I don't think Bryce is worth up overhauling your entire program for. I mean, I know it's the. I agree with that. I know it's the Bron, but like this is not a top three talent that's going to bring you a national championship, which is what's really going to bring you the money and the notoriety. Yeah. You know, it's, 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 it would be a, I don't know. I, I kind of roll my eyes at a lot of this, <laughs> the whole thing, um, <laughs> but I, I don't think Bryce James is worth uprooting your program for. And to your money point, like Ross Bjork had some great hires at A&M. He also hired Buzz Williams. It hasn't turned out to be the great hire. It was a great hire at the time. Mm. Highly, highly coveted, coach, but hasn't had the success that you would hope for at a and But the one thing Ross has always done at an extremely high level is raise money. So I don't think the money side of it, Tyvis, is as big of a factor as but you may think just because this dude is elite I just at said, rallying the troops for money. I'm not saying that's the only reason. I'm saying it's not like it would be a bad hire. No, it no. would be a fine hire. That's what I'm saying. Like, like when Thad, I, But I'm with you. If he doing it because LeBron said then it. Then I have an issue. Yeah. Right, right. When Thad came, Thad was the hot coach, the hot up and coming coach, and Ohio State got him, mm-hmm. and that was unusual for Ohio State. It's a great hire. Yeah. It was a great hire. Yeah, it was. And if they can replicate that with another hot up and coming coach, and Ohio State can have him, then you do it. But you don't do it because LeBron wants you to. Do it. So Dusty May's an oh, Indiana guy. He's born and raised in Indiana. It's where he played high school basketball. A lot of people presume that when the Indiana Hoosiers like oh Mike Woodson. That guy right there yeah. is next in line to become the Indiana head coach. Well, that's what they thought about Thad. Is he from Indiana as well? He's, well, I'm trying to remember now. He was at Butler. Maybe it was Indiana. There was a place where, like, everyone thought he was going to go. And he came to Ohio and State. he came so. to Ohio State. So, either way, Dusty May, I think, is a really good basketball coach. You don't take FAU to the Final Four by accident. Like, there, there's a legitimate, and the tournament's wonky and upsets happen all the time, but Florida Atlantic is not a hotbed for recruiting grounds when you're in the state of Florida when all these other guys are getting NIL opportunities at other, uh, other places. But he's done a really good job in the transfer portal. His teams play hard as hell. They got a seven-footer this year named Vlad Golden, who if you don't know by now, he's going to be one of the bigger names in the tournament. They're going to be a top-four seed in the tournament again this year. Like, 
if Ross Bjork and the Ohio State contingent come to the decision that Dusty May is the right coach, I have no issue whatsoever. But we've seen Just LeBron. The, with a we've seen donation. we've seen LeBron the player, the best of all time. Where did they get this information that LeBron said this? I, I ran a report online. Yeah. Who, like, who knows? Who knows? So it might not even be true. Yeah. We who knows? Yeah. It's all, all, all reports. Yeah. That's interesting. I mean, but LeBron the GM, mixed results, right? Shake at best. LeBron the coaching firm. Are you willing to bet that he's a A plus coaching firm? It's an A plus player. What, a a B minus C plus GM. Where would you project his his coaching firm talents to be? Who they lose to FAU last year in the play in the uh, UConn? Who won the whole thing? Okay, well, that's respectable. That's respectable. I, I, I'll, I'll tell you FAU's tournament run. But they had that crazy game against San Diego State, if you remember. Vaguely, I have like. NCAA tournament, I can't remember anything. You they make, were 35 and 3 last you season. You making a bracket this year? They were the 9 seed tie this You know how I made a bracket last time I made a bracket? Did it off mascots? I did it off coin flips. <laughs> I, did all, I did a whole bracket based on coin flips. It was accurate? It was terrible. <laughs> so, but I mean. Are you saying you're good, not going to do that? Yeah, that's the last time I did a bracket. I was in Portland. I was I forget some pool I was in and and I, I was in Portland for it was when I was covering the Cavs I'm like screw it I'm just gonna do this by coin flip and I did every game by coin flip so we had a couple 16 seeds I think advancing to like the elite eight <laughs> I don't remember now it was bad they uh, but they I held had, true to the coin flip they were a nine seed last year okay made the final four they beat Kansas State in the elite eight uh they beat no they beat Houston in the elite eight they beat Kansas State in the Sweet Sixteen. Beat Memphis in the first round. <coughs> uh, they're really good. Like they—they they were a really good team last year. So, I guess for him to still be there, he's waiting. Well, he got a big—he got a big extension, yeah. So, but it, I'm saying, like, if he didn't leave Indiana's going to be open because Mike Woodson probably getting fired. So, if he didn't yeah. leave after last year, then he's waiting for something. Indiana. I would tend to agree. Yeah, I would tend to agree. But, like I said, if Ohio State decides he's the best option, I think it's a great hire. If it's because LeBron said so, that's yeah. that, that's where I got a little bit the of a only beef. way. The only way that they uh, Jake Bieber continue to win some games that he somehow slither his way into that tournament and win a game. Ty, to, I, I apologize. So here is their run in the in the tournament last year. They beat Memphis, then they beat Fairleigh Dickinson, who beat Purdue. Fairleigh Dickinson. Then they beat Tennessee in the Sweet Sixteen. That's my bracket up. They beat year. Kansas State to go to the Final Four, and then they lost on the crazy buzzer beater to San Diego State in the uh, Final Four. San Diego State lost to UConn in the championship. They got smoked by I'm, UConn. Uh, That's what you, you said that incorrectly. They got smoked by UConn. Did they get then. smoked by UConn? Which is, but that that was not Florida Atlantic. That was not Dusty May. And this year, they are twenty-two and seven. They moved up conferences. Uh, they're projected four seed in the tournament right now. I'm covering the first and second round for us in Pittsburgh this year, for the Athletic. I'm nice. looking forward to it. Are you, yeah, it's going to be mad, man. First two rounds, man. Mad. That's, that's, that's when the madness happens. That's the best part of the NCA <laughs> is the first two rounds. When I tell you last year, I was sitting, i never forget, I was sitting at a LowerField.com because I was doing uh, some stuff with Typico. And they, everybody was like, you should bet on uh, fairly Dickinson against Purdue. And I'm like, why would I do that? they like, it's madness. Just do it. And I didn't do it, and I'm so mad. <laughs> I'm so mad. I'm like, that, like, like Zach Eady should go for 40 points. They ain't even. I don't even think Fairleigh Dickinson had like a tall center. Like they do was like six six, right? They had Fairly like five Dickinson shooters so yeah. last year. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you could you could frustrate Zach Eady by just putting like Draymond Green to S guys, just short, get up, kind of make it hard. Is for he him gonna to go? Is he gonna be good in the pro? No, he can't move. He's giant, but he can't move. Unless there's somehow a transition in basketball where they change the rules, which have you heard anything about them discussing a possible rule change this off season to make it a little allow a little more physicality on, for, to defensive players? No, but that doesn't mean anything. But I haven't heard about it. I heard a little whisper. I'm poke around. Not sure if it's anything more than just. I can't believe that it. they're going to go back to anything defensive. They've, it's been an offensive league for. They should. They should yeah. make some sort of defensive move. Hmm. They should do that in the NFL, too. All the Make way. it more defensive? I mean, 
You building a parlay, Ty? No. You going to build a parlay for tonight's game? Nope. I'm scared of it. <laughs> it is a hard one. I'm scared of it. I don't know how it's... I do think Donovan, I mean, not Donovan, I think Darius goes for 20 plus, but. He has to. He has, like, I feel line, like Jared Allen to. gets 15 points. I think Jared Allen will get 15. I think Evan Mobley will get around 12. So, we're, we're, let, me, let me ask you guys this real quick then. Mobley better be over 12 today. Yeah. Let me, let me, this, this is a serious question. Serious question. This is not one of my jokes. This is not High the Goon Squad. This is a real question. <laughs> Let's say Donovan misses a week, so five games, right? Mm-hmm. Let's just say a week, got PRP shots. I know he's only scheduled to miss three games, but then they got a back-to-back. For the sake of this, let's say he misses a week. How many combined points do the Cavs need from their big three now, Darius, Allen, Mobley, to, to be able to win four of the five? Seven. And mind you, they're playing Boston, Atlanta, Minnesota, Brooklyn, and Phoenix. 90. <laughs> 30 a P. No, for real, but seriously, like, what, do you, what do you think? It's like 53. I was going to say just I was, was going to say 55. <laughs> I was going to say 20, 20, 20, and 15. I was going to say like 65 to 70. How are you getting a 65 to 70? 25 from Darius? 25, 20, and 20. Dang. Is that possible? Yeah. No, for sure it's possible. I feel like Max 30, is 20, get and more. 25. 30, 18, and 27. That's possible. That's for sure possible. Evan Evan gets you a quiet twenty a lot of nights. He does. He so. had against Chicago. <laughs> he did actually. He had, he had like I thought yeah, it's crazy. Like yeah. he very does quiet. Get a yeah. quiet. You look 20. up and he's got like nineteen and twelve. You're like, where the hell did that come from? Well, yeah. to be honest with you, Jared Allen always scores. His problem is the rebound. And that's well, he had been getting double doubles. It was a lock, and now it's now he, it's he came as, by. Uh, not as much. It's an eight point spread tonight. Would you take the Cavs to cover? A lot of uncertainty with injuries. A lot of guys questionable heading into the I matchup. I think the Cavs cover. I would take the Cavs cover. Yeah, I'll take the Cavs cover. They better. Win? Mm, cover. Cover? I'd feel comfortable with the cover. I can't call a win, but they could. There's no reason they can't win this game. Go in the game. <laughs> it's March and you're at home. Go in the game. <laughs> how, uh, how much Guardians have you kept up with since you last spring training? A uh, decent amount. We asked Jay this yesterday. I'm curious what you think. Is there a chance Angel Martinez could win a starting spot? On opening day in this in this lineup, he's been playing so well in the spring. He's been he's had a great spring. I think if you do that, you're moving Jimenez to short, and I don't know that you want to do that at this point. Um, I think the real question is Tyler Freeman in center. Can Tyler Freeman win the center field job out of nowhere? Because <coughs> I left Arizona thinking it was Esteban Florial's to lose. I thought that this they really Miles Stroll. It is not Miles. It better not be. But I, I left when I, when I got on the plane. I thought this is Florial's job to lose in center. I think they really want him to win it. And Tyler has really had a good spring so far, and he's really sort of emerged. In fact, I was talk, I was texting with Zach Meisel about it last night, and Zach felt like they could go to like a committee. I'm like, of course they could. Who does a committee <laughs> in, center field. in center field? The most important, maybe. other than the Guardians and the freaking Rays. Like that's what the Rays. That's what something the Rays would do, and they win a hundred games. So I what guess about, you can't knock it. Uh, is there any chance the louder? I, I know it would be unprecedented. I saw, but you see what Jeff Passan reported. Yeah, I, I saw uh, him well, throw it, it a line wasn't in a report. There. It was a. Uh, he put a line in there that he could be an opening yeah, yeah. day. That would go against uh, Kyle Manzardo starting in AAA. Like, the louder is their top prop. He looks so good. Though. I would be shocked if DeLauder broke camp with them because they're not going to give up the year of control. They'll just bring him up. If, if he's really ready, they'll bring him up in May. They'll bring him up after the, the, the deadline where they can control him for an extra season. I would be shocked if they started, if he started on opening day. I mean, they did it with Quan a couple of years ago, you know, but I, I, I think DeLauder and Manzardo are both starting in AAA. Maybe Be- I'm wrong. I hope I'm wrong. Bieber hit 94 on the gun. That's big. Are you reading? Is that You think that's, that's legit. here to stay? Yeah, I think it's legit. I think it's... What about my boy T-Mag? That's who I care about. Tristan McKenzie. He's... I didn't talk to him about it because I was told he's kind of sick of talking about the elbow, but it's a risk, man. He's, he's really running a risk this year. Oh, my God. That's, with, my, that's my boy. With, that's uh, a, a with, slim with not having the surgery. I hope... I, you know... All tears are different, and it's in different spots, and hopefully he can, he can emerge from this and be just fine. Um, but Bieber, I think, is legit. I, he worked at Driveline, which everybody knows that's where you want to go when you try and put things back together. Driveline has helped a ton of guys get their career back on track. This is a monster year for Shane. He passed up their offer. 
Uh, years ago, he declined. The Guardians tried to extend him, and and now this is his time to get paid. So this is a massive, massive year for Shane. I think the velocity is legit. I think I think he's in store for a big year. Does he start this? He obviously starts the season with the Guardians. Yeah. Does he finish the season with the Guardians? Fifty-fifty. I think they could be in contention and still trade him because they just can't. They are not in a position, and I know they're full of prospects already, but I don't think this is an organization that can risk losing a talent like that and getting nothing for him at the end of the year. So even if they're in it, if, if these other guys, if, if Bybee continues to take another step, if Gavin Williams takes another step, if, if T-Mac proves he can pitch through this and be okay, I still think you have to explore it because the prices will be so much higher at the deadline than they are now. Yeah. The, the, what you can command for him at the trade deadline. There's very little pitching available every year at the trade deadline. If he's the top starter, you could get a haul. <coughs> get a haul. Yeah. Absolutely. All right, well, that was talking Guardians. Well, let's say go. we need to send Jay to drive line. He's getting surgery. We still need to send him. <laughs> he's actually getting surgery. We'll see you in overtime. Peace.